Check, check, check. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Testing audio. One, two, one, two. It's time now for your Sacred Heart Knights football with Adam Coulter. And welcome into Minneapolis. Is another, well, it's Saline County rivalry, NCAA league rivalry, Saline County. And here in Minneapolis this evening, as it'll be the Sacred Heart Knights taking on the Minneapolis Lions. Minneapolis comes into the game 1-0 after a 59-0 victory, a big one against Republic County one week ago in the opening game of the season. Meanwhile, Sacred Heart made the road trip to Wichita, Wichita Trinity, but in a battle of the Knights versus the Knights, the Knights of Sacred Heart had a 13-point lead to open the game, a couple of 12-point leads, but 22 unanswered in the end, and some injuries for the Knights, as it was the Wichita Trinity. Knights winning by a score of 36 to 26 last week. Plenty more to come here on Countdown to Kickoff. We'll get you set for the start of this one. And you're listening and watching the Sacred Heart Football on Salina Post presented by Bennington State Bank. Whether on the field, court, or in the operating room, experience matters. A coach loves an experienced team just like a patient values an experienced doctor. Salina Ortho has ABOS board certified physicians with over 40 years of orthopedic service. If you need help staying active or just want to discuss options regarding the newest techniques and services and specialties that Salina Ortho provides, see one of our trusted physicians or visit it's SalinaOrtho.com. Salina Ortho, your voice, your choice, past, present, and future. When does normal acute pain become abnormal chronic pain? Chronic pain can be one of two types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Each type differs based on what causes it, what it feels like, and what treatments may relieve it. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain. Online at Salina Pain Clinic. Org. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Back here on Countdown to Kickoff, Tyler Henry alongside you as Sacred Heart has made the trip to Minneapolis for a big week two matchup, and we are joined now by the head coach of the Sacred Heart Knights, Norm Jennings. Coach, thank you so much for stopping by the pregame show. Hey, you bet. It's great to be here. Wanted to get your thoughts really quickly, just your honest thoughts on a tight 36-26 loss at the hands of Wichita Trinity to open your season. I know you guys kept it close the whole way, but now that you've had a chance to kind of break down the film, what was kind of your biggest takeaway from that game? Well, that was a hard loss. I, we were up most of that game just until uh, we, had, we had enough injuries that we really couldn't sustain on the field. Uh, our depth is something that we always work on, but when the 
when you have five injuries that basically impact the same specialty player group, uh, we just we just ran out of depth, uh, and that's when that fourth quarter uh, just allowed them to put up 13, 14 pretty quick points to, to end in a 10-point loss. I know, obviously, you know, you'd like to start the season with a win. Like you said, some factors there outside of your control. But I did still want to ask, were there any big positive takeaways from this first week matchup that, that kind of did give you cause for hope for the future? Boy, we had tons of, of positive takeaways. Our boys have worked so hard all summer long on the installation of this new offense and um, working alongside Coach Cleveland on his defense. And we saw so many players uh, that stepped in. We utilized uh, 28 different players off our roster on Friday night. And as a coach, uh, the way that I want to build a future program, um, that that's just like a dream uh, to think that you've got that much depth that you can pull from. Um, and that's that's a huge positive thing that we saw on Friday night. Well, and again, I've, I've heard it, but I wanted to get your thoughts on this as well. I know there are things beyond your control, like the injuries that you mentioned, but the things that we hear coaches talk about all the time, effort and attitude are, are the things that are well within your control. Did you like the fight that you continued to see from your guys, even as those injuries kind of piled up on you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they. this group has so much heart. Uh, there's no quit in them, whether it's a, a, a practice, whether it's something during the summer. Um couple of the summer camps that they went to uh, were phenomenal in helping to just build that on-field drive and character. And, man, Friday we just got to watch it, and our fans really commented on on that heart that they saw in all of those boys that hit the field. I know that technically until districts, every game is just another game on the schedule, but you've got a Minneapolis team this week that has kind of been trying to step up and, I mean, let's face it, a stacked NCAA. What do these league games with these familiar opponents that you see every year mean to these guys? Well, it means a lot. Uh, it means a lot because those, those conferences are important across all sports. And, and so while we might be the little guy in football, um, those are important, important games across all of the different sports, baseball, how they impact basketball. Uh, so our boys will go out on Friday, and, and this game will actually mean a whole lot more to them than the Wichita Trinity game. Uh, they want to win conference games, and, and yeah, we are the little guy. We're a little 1A school. Uh, we don't have 65 kids on the roster at the beginning of summer, uh, and so that, that means these kids work harder knowing that the odds are a little bit against them, but they don't, they don't believe so when kickoff occurs, I'll tell you that for sure. This is a, a Minneapolis team that, at least on paper, it's obviously tough to judge just with a one-week sample size, but it looks like they've taken a step forward here. They came out and defeated Republic County 59 to nothing in their Week 1 matchup. When you have a chance to kind of break down the film from that game, are there any areas where Minneapolis just looks better on tape than they did a year ago? Oh, I see improvement uh, almost across the board, to be honest with you. Coach Flax is an awesome guy, and, and he's obviously an incredible football coach. Um, year after year, they lose key seniors, and they've just got key sophomores that step up into those holes or juniors. Uh, and so whether we're looking at, at the offensive line or defensive line, whether we're looking at quarterback position or receiver specialty positions, um, you can see that, that they did not have a drop-off, uh, and they've got just highly skilled kids taking the field, just, just like what they did last year. Well, and speaking of some of those highly skilled kids, this is a defense for Minneapolis that shut out Republic County. They forced six turnovers a week ago. What are some of the biggest challenges that are going to be presented by that defense? And more importantly, what are the keys for your offense to kind of continue rolling and overcome those? Well, it, it almost looks like it's got to be the story of fast and nasty against fast and nasty. Uh, our offense is designed to be a, a fast-paced offense. Uh, and it's designed to be one that, that takes advantage uh, of a fast defense, uh, that takes advantage to, of over-pursuit or things like that, um, takes advantage of, of open field one-on-ones. Um, so I think these two, I think their defensive unit and this offensive unit are just going to be incredibly fun for the fans to watch. 
because uh, they're they're both going to be full throttle against each other when they get out there. Flipping fields on you really quickly here, Coach. I know that this is also a Minneapolis offense that ran for 227 yards. They did have two passing touchdowns, but it came on just three attempts. When you look at kind of scheme-wise, what you guys will have to do on your defensive side, what are the biggest keys to stopping the run while also being aware of that short passing game? Yeah, so um, stopping the run starts in the trench uh, and how you react to different blocking schemes, um, not chasing ghosts, uh, these things that coaches just just preach to their players all the time, you know. Uh, simply, if you have an offensive puller, then you know there's somebody going to be coming along to try to take you out in that hole. Uh, and and so just sound fundamental things on that D line, um, having linebackers that that flow vertically uh, and and horizontally with the stretch plays. Um, that those will be those will be keys. We did a great job of stopping the run against Wichita Trinity. They didn't have nearly as many yards on the ground as what they did last year, uh, and then we we held very well against the number one tandem in three A uh, with with Trinity's quarterback and receiver, whether that was short dumpy passes or deep passes. So. Um, I think I think our defense is is prepped and ready, and and they are um, are ready to take on a more ground running style team that we're going to see Friday. Um, but they're certainly able to defend the pass as they showed in those first three quarters down in Wishville Trinity. Yes, sir. Well, coach, thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate you stopping by, and best of luck to your team tonight. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, sir. That was our pregame chat with head coach Norm Jennings of the Sacred Heart Knights, and with that, we welcome you back out to Minneapolis. And without any further jibber jabber on my part, as we are just about ready to go for kickoff, we'll kick it back over to the voice of the Knights here, Mr. Adam Colt. Thank you, Tyler. And well, we can do some jibber jabbing on my part, I guess. But mentioned a little earlier as well, Sacred Heart comes in 0 and 1. They were on the road last week, Wichita Trinity. Battle of the Knights and the Knights. They lost that one 36 26 to open the season 0 1. Meanwhile, a big win for Minneapolis. The Lions upended the bus of Republic County, the Buffaloes. That score final last week, week one, 59 to nothing. It's going to be Minneapolis kicking off. Minneapolis in the home blues, trimmed with the red and white. Knights in the road white uniforms. Minneapolis will kick it off to Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart is going to be going left to right as we look at it here from the press box. And it's a short kick. Taking just behind the 30, and that's going to be it. A short run. And Sacred Heart's going to start first and 10 as they spot the ball at their own 31. Well, and for Sacred Heart, it feels like the story coming into this game, Adam, they've got a couple of guys that are going to be missing here in this one that they're going to have to find a workaround for. But you heard Coach Jennings say in the pregame, he's really excited about some of the depth and some of the younger guys that stepped up. Absolutely. I know we both had time to talk to him, and he's looking for improvement from his team and says he's really proud and high on some of his kids. There's an option to the right, and on the run, that was quarterback Evan Bogart. And a host of lines are going to take him down for a loss. As he'll be back beyond, behind the 30, I should say. 11.39 to go here in the opening quarter. It's Minneapolis and Sacred Heart. A couple of league rivals in the North Central Activities Association. Also, county rivals here. Just the roughly half-hour drive. Ottawa County versus Saline County here tonight. Back in the center, Evan Bogart, the quarterback tonight. And off right, trying to make, turn the corner and cannot. And again, Minneapolis read it and forcing another loss of yardage for Sacred Heart. Well, and this is a Minneapolis defense that, I mean, really stepped up big against the Buffaloes. Not only is shut out, but they forced six turnovers in that game as well. So Sacred Heart's got to make sure they value the football, trying to find a way to go forward here on a big third down. The ball's going to be spotted all the way back at the 22. Third and long for Sacred Heart. Bogart in their center once again. And once again, the Minneapolis defense just swallows up the night ball carrier. 
So it's going to be fourth and long, and the Knights are going to have to punt away this opening possession. Well, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. I mean, it was a little bit interesting. We see a quarterback change made by the Knights here, but it helps them open up their offense with the personnel that they have. And we talked a bit about that off air. Michael Matucci, he ran for two scores last week. He threw for two others. But tonight, he's Bogart starting at quarterback, a 6'2", senior, 198. Matucci, 5'7", 144, and a senior. Well, he's going to play out of the slot this evening. He's also going to be a defensive back on uh, defense. And if Sacred Heart gets the opportunity for any PATs, he'll be on that duty as well. Short kick dropped here at the 42. 50 across midfield. And out of bounds with it. That's Bryson Gotti. Well, and now the question becomes, what Minneapolis offense are we going to see? They obviously put up big numbers, but we heard from Coach Flax as we spoke with him before the game began, and he said, Really, the, the starters in this game only played in the first half, and then they got into some of the reserve guys. They moved the ball with ruthless efficiency on the ground. And a Republic County team we've talked about off and on there, too, that's rebuilding and tough loss for them. And Minneapolis on the rise as well as a team. And now on the other end of the ball, trying to turn the corner on the carry. That was Braylon Smith. Smith on the carry for Minneapolis after about the... Short gain on that play. Actually, a short loss, I should say. Well, Owen Just, the quarterback for this Minneapolis team, he's got an interesting stat line coming into this one, to say the least, as you look at what he did in his first game and three for three, two touchdown passes. Not yes. a bad day. <laughs> Very efficient, as I said earlier on. <laughs> Handoff up the middle. That'll go for about five. That's going to be up to the 35 yard line. Minneapolis right now, number 11, Thomas Chase. 9.05 to go here in the opening quarter. Now coming on the field, Chase Johnson. Gavin Barringer is going to go to the sideline momentarily. Ball just beyond the thir uh, 35, I should say. Third and six. For Minneapolis, quick out near side. One-on-one -on -one coverage there, and that's going to be a short loss on the reception. That was Ryan Parks, senior tight end for the Lions. Oh, well, and that's a great open field tackle by Doyle Marshall. Just a freshman came in and, I mean, again, that's what Sacred Heart needs. You gotta be able to tackle in open space. Minneapolis tries to get it to their guy in open space. And how about this? They're keeping the offense on the field on a fourth and five. Single receivers right and left. Handoff. And that's going to be right at the first down marker, it looks like, up to the 25. And they're moving the sticks. Yep, and that's just well blocked up front, well executed. And that's more the style that we're expecting to see out of Minneapolis. They want to kind of get three, four yards in a cloud of dust. We'll see if they kind of go back to the run here on a fresh set of downs to the first and ten. And what did Coach uh, Jennings say? Fast and nasty both Fast ways? Fast and nasty, that's what he said. Yes, sir. Shotgun now, two in the backfield, rolling to his right. Quarterback Owen just pass, far sideline, and that's going to be six for Minneapolis. Seven forty-eight mark. Minneapolis strikes first. At six nothing Lions. And that was to Junior Zach Nelson on the play. But how about this? We did not see this volume of passing against Republic County. Only three passing attempts all day, like I said, out of Owen Justin. Out of the gate, two early passes here. You wonder if they were saving that for Sacred Heart. Very well could have been. Owen Just, quarterback, now is going to attempt the PAT. Snap down, ball up, and it's good. 7.48 to go here in the first, 7-0, and well, you mentioned volume, and looking around here at the crowd on both sides, a lot of Sacred Park fans here, Minneapolis here on their home bench, home side of the field, and well, Bennington State Bank, one of our sponsors of Sacred Heart Football here on Salina Post, they paid, they, they took the bit, they, uh, <laughs> easy for me to say, <laughs> everybody got in for free tonight because Bennington State Bank... They, could, they took over the bill. They paid for everyone's admission here tonight, so not a soul paid to get in here tonight. And they're one of our sponsors of Sacred Heart Football. So if you're, oh, you're in the area, stop on out. Free admission all evening. 
Well, for and, this one. And Bennington State Bank, I mean, they've, they've done this. This has kind of become their hallmark a couple of different places, but it's so cool to see a local business get so invested in the community, not just into one or two local teams, but really across the board here in North Central Kansas. Absolutely, and just, again, looking, you know, kind of peeking my head out the window here and looking left and right, home half of the stadium, not a lot of empty space here, and across the way, Sagat Hart, they came, traveled well as well, coming up from Salinas. Good atmosphere here for week two football here on a Friday night. Seems the Knights always travel well. That's a that's a fan base that, man, rain or shine, good teams or bad, they are there for their guys each and every week. Absolutely. Well, Owen just doing it all. Quarterback, place kicker, and now he's going to kick this one off. End over end kick. Bouncing it to 25, taken there. I believe that's Matucci. Actually, I take that back. That was, that's yep, that was right the first. You got it. <laughs> I knew I had 11 and 12 in front of me, and it was Michael Matucci. And I, we talked about that a bit. I mentioned it a bit earlier that he was a starting quarterback last week, four total touchdowns. And a little bit strange to me that Bogart starting a quarterback after that performance last week, but I'm sure Coach Jennings has his reasons. Well, you see the speed of Matucci, though, and we talked a little bit with Coach Jennings about this. It really does open up what you can use him for when he's not the guy that has to take the snap. So we'll see how it bodes here on their second drive of the day. And Sagan Hart, another blown play, a blown up play, rather, but plays. Really, every offensive play for Sega Hart, it's been one white jersey and two, three, four Minneapolis Lions blue ones. Well, and speaking of converted quarterbacks, how about that? That's Ryan Parks, who was the quarterback for Minneapolis a season ago. He has been transitioned into a different role on offense, and there he gets in the backfield and records the sack. And so many of these kids playing both sides of the ball, always interesting to see just how many positions some of these kids play each game. Well, and resilient kids out there, too. Snap back, take it hard with it. And has a run to the left. And that'll get him in positive territory. All right, take looking at the wrong stick, I should say. So it's going to be third and long now for the Knights. Yeah, short game that time for Doyle Marshall, the junior, in on the carry. And just trying to establish a little bit of a rhythm here, and that's really what it is all about right now for Sacred Heart. you got a couple of different pieces out there for this night squad, just trying to get comfortable offensively here. Clock rolling now, six and a half to go, and counting here in the opening quarter. Minneapolis score on their opening offensive series. Sacred Heart now on their second. They count up in the backfield, rolling back. Bogart over the middle, and the pass below a couple of the Lions on the coverage. Well, and he was right. looking for looking for Bryson Gotti, but I'll tell you what, I like the poise out of Bogart on that play. He stayed up in the pocket. He felt the pressure. Didn't tuck it. Didn't try to force anything. He just stood tall and delivered a pass. He keeps that up. He's going to complete a few of those. So for the second straight time at fourth and long for the Knights, and they're going to punt it away one more time. Line drive of a kick. And touched initially at the 30 back near the 25. And it's going to be down on the tackle for the Knights. Andy Marshall, the defensive lineman. And a short gain on the reception, or the... Uh, return I should say from Minneapolis. Well and, and I'll tell you what Adam I'll be curious to see if they go back to the air here on this drive. We've already here seen them throw. I mean they, they make one more passing attempt. They've done more passing than they did in the entirety of their first game against Republic County. Three in the backfield. Snap. Hand off left side and this is going to be a short gain. Hand off to Smith heading up the gut uh, brought down by a whole package. Right in that was Mason Smith the on the carry. Well, and you got to think, you got, you got to appreciate the chess game right now that Tom Flax is playing with Minneapolis because, I mean, the, the scouting report coming into this game was going to be run, and the formations have kind of shown that as well, but they've mixed it up. Now the receiver is three to the right there off the handoff, and with it, 
This is Ryan Parks, and that's going to be a big gain, a first down, and across midfield for Minneapolis. I talked a little bit about Ryan Parks earlier as we were just kind of breaking down the guys that transitioned away from quarterback. That's why they made the switch and went ahead and trusted Owen Just, the sophomore, as the quarterback because it allows you to hand the ball off to Parks. You can throw it to him. He is a weapon that they want out in the wider areas of the field. You see the speed on display there. He'll make some space for himself and do his thing. And back in the shotgun one more time. Fake the handoff, rolling to his right. Now a pass to the right. Caught. Far side, that's Ryan Parks one more time. And that's another first down reception for Minneapolis. Yeah, already for Ryan Parks. He's had a return. He's had a reception. He's had a big carry. And, I mean, he is kind of flexing his abilities outside of the pocket. But what a ball delivered by Owen Just for a guy that only threw three passes a week ago. He looks pretty comfortable throwing on the run there. Absolutely, he sure does. Move the sticks one more time. It's going to be first down. Knights at the, or rather the Lions at the night 32. Snap now. It's going to be a handoff. Left side trying to turn the corner. And Knights, nice read on that play as the ball carrier. That was Zach Nelson. Could not turn the corner as a trio of Knights bring him down. And it'll be second down and long now for Minneapolis. Well, and that's what you want to see out of Sacred Heart because they sealed the edge off there completely. There was never a chance that the back there was going to get to that sideline. Good play there for Sacred Heart to force the negative yardage, and now a long second and 13. Twin receivers far side on the right. Snap back, fake the handoff. Now keeping himself is just, and that'll be a short gain. Maybe the original line of scrimmage are just short. Well, but that's the important thing, right? Now it's third and 10 as opposed to a third and short, and that really closes down your playbook. If you're Coach, coach Flax, you don't have as many options here. So Sacred Heart, tell you what, you force a quick turnover here. It's still a one-score game. You can get right back in this thing. Minneapolis back to the line. Man in motion right to left. Just looking, looking. Swing pass right side. That's going to be caught. And fighting for that extra yardage is going to be fourth and short now for the Minneapolis Lions. Well, and remember, they kept the offense on the field last time, and I, I think they're going to do the same here. And I don't mind the call. I mean, Coach Flax has rolled the dice a couple of times down here, but you're deep enough in enemy territory, Adam. Even if you turn it over, worst case scenario, you're giving the opposing or you're giving Sacred Heart the ball back at the 25. Kind of in that no man's land where you're too far for a field goal, but you're the field's short enough. You don't want to punt it away. Take a roll of the dice here and see what you can come up with. Fourth and four, ball at the 27-yard line. Under three minutes to play here in the first. Just looking, looking, being chased and overthrown on the far sideline. So turning it over on downs, Minneapolis, Sacred Heart's going to have it at their own 27. Yeah, that time just flushed him out of the pocket, and that's exactly what you want. They chased him down, and ultimately win themselves back a possession. Now they've got an opportunity to get that offense clicking, and it all starts on first down. Obviously, everything starts on first down, but if you can get some good positive yardage and get a little confidence and a little comfort with some of these new guys, get the feeling they can string together a good drive here. And then, as you said, Tyler, just one possession now. Still 7 nothing. 2.51 to play as Sacred Heart starts its next offensive possession. Man in motion in the backfield. Pitch right side. And with a near side, that's Matucci trying to turn the corner. Thought he might have been out of bounds right there, and it looks like he will be. Nice run, though, by Michael Matucci. As he's all the way across midfield, and he's going to be spotted down at the 38-yard line of Minneapolis. First time for the Knights in Lion territory. Well, and we've already seen the comfort and the poise of a guy who did play some quarterback last year at Evan Bogart. But that's what you get by having Michael Matucci out on the sideline. His ability to get to that edge and then just use the speed. I mean, there were a couple of Lions who took a good angle to him. Just couldn't get there to wrap him up. He's too quick. He's a fun young man to watch, I'll tell you that. 2.41 to play now. First and 10 here in the first quarter. Knights driving, trailing 7-0. Back under center is Bogart. And Bogart's going to keep it himself. Going to go ahead for a couple. Short gain for Sacred Heart. But still positive yardage, and you've still got the momentum of that big haymaker that you delivered. Just got to keep moving forward, and that's really the big thing. I mean, after... 
again, it sounds obvious, but for Sacred Heart, your first five offensive plays from scrimmage went backwards. So you get a little comfort, you get a little confidence, now you can start taking a couple of shots, and it really opens up your playbook as well if you're Coach Jennings. Knights back to the line, single receiver. Both sides, far side left, near side right. Bogart under center. Three backs along with him. Going an option right, and he's going to run into a couple of Minneapolis Lions. Bogart looks like he's back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Well, and that's the right play there. Instead of sacrificing Michael Matucci to the football gods, he elected to go ahead and just take the loss himself. But at that point, I mean, again, Minneapolis had that red. They had three guys in the backfield. That was never going for anything more than a loss of one. So you get a chance to stop and reset instead of making a bad situation worse. Still a good read there by Bogart. 90 seconds and counting here in the opening quarter. It's Minneapolis and Sacred Heart. Lions struck first, and they hold that 7 nothing lead here. But again, the Knights... First time this evening on their third offensive series now on the Minneapolis half of the field. Staff in a short run. Bogart kept it himself, and it's going to be fourth and long now for the Knights. Yeah, they had everybody spread out wide that time. I think they were hoping to catch Minneapolis off guard by taking the quarterback up the gut, but and the middle linebacker kind of reading that all the way. Might have been trying to blitz in. Either way, he was there to make the stop. Clock continues to run. This may be the, assuming the Knights get a playoff here, it'll be the, more than likely, the final play here of the opening quarter. Well, now it's the Knights keeping the offense on the field here on fourth down and eight. Unless they're going to pooch it. Well, Matucci's one of their kickers, too, so that's very possible. <laughs> Bogart back, back, looking, going long, going to take a shot for the end zone and just overthrowing Matucci. Just a little bit overthrown, but not a bad idea. Take a shot for the end zone. Well, the clock stops with 20 seconds, but I think we have we have gotten our answer and we have gotten it definitively as to why Michael Matucci is not playing quarterback. It's reasons like that where he is wide open on that play. That's a tough throw for any high school quarterback to make, but Matucci's playmaking ability off the off the quarterback position has been just phenomenal already. And we've seen it time and again already here in the first quarter. Just so good at making space for himself and getting open. So that'll be turned over on downs. First down play for Minneapolis. It'll be a short run to the near side left. And really no gain on that one, I don't think. But we're going to finish up here on the, in the first quarter. Sacred Heart football. Here on Salina Post, brought to you in part by Salina Regional Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Salina Septic Service, Commercial Tire Center, Hometown Disposal, Salina Ortho, APAC Shears, and Mallory Clinic. I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors again this evening. Bennington State Bank, they've got the tab on all the tickets, so stop on by if you're in the area. Free football, Minneapolis and Sacred Heart. 12 minutes up on the clock for the second quarter. You're listening and watching to Sacred Heart Football on Salina Post, presented by Bennington State Bank. Whether on the field, court, or in the operating room, experience matters. A coach loves an experienced team just like a patient values an experienced doctor. Salina Ortho has ABOS board certified physicians with over 40 years of orthopedic service. If you need help staying active or just want to discuss options regarding the newest techniques and services and specialties that Salina Ortho provides, see one of our trusted physicians or visit SalinaOrtho.com. Salina Ortho, your voice, your choice, past, present, and future. When does normal acute pain become abnormal chronic pain? Chronic pain can be one of two types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Each type differs based on what causes it, what it feels like, and what treatments may relieve it. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain. Online at Salina Pain Clinic. Org. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Welcome back to Minneapolis. We get set for the start of the second quarter. It is Sacred Heart football on Salina Post. We hope you're enjoying the video and the audio as Minneapolis team switch size now. Second and short for Minneapolis and running again a short run play, but stood up this time. The Sacred Heart defense coming up. Well, and really. 
and really quickly, just did want to thank everyone who tried to tune in last week for bearing with us through the technical difficulties. But as you said, Adam, great to be bringing you this game. And, and what a beautiful night for some football. I know it was 90 degrees at kickoff, but you got a light breeze. You got the sunset right now. What more could you want? Upper 80s right now at kickoff and here at the moment. Looking at mid to upper 70s by the time this one's said and done tonight. So beautiful night for high school football, absolutely. Adam Coulter, Tyler Henry, and on the camera, by the way, Avery Cato. I want to thank both of you for helping out tonight. Appreciate that. And how about the Sacred Heart defense? Which, I mean, I'll be honest, looked like a little out of sorts, a little back on their heels on that first drive. But whatever adjustments they've made, they've made quickly. And let's not forget, Norm Jennings was the defensive coordinator a season ago. You think he's got that defensive mind still clicking? He, is, uh, he absolutely does. And I was actually uh, talking to him. I went down by the, one of their practices. I was back this past Wednesday and just hearing, seeing, actually seeing him face to face and just the look on his face. He's ex Despite the loss in week one, he's looking forward to this season. Minneapolis back to the line, a fourth down. It looks as in punt formation are the Lions. Single receiver, or single uh, turner back, I should say, for Sacred Heart. Fair catch called for. That was Bryson Gotti taking it for the Knights. So, going to spot this. 26 of Sacred Heart. Looks like about the 26. And I'll tell you what, I, I've been very impressed with the resilience of Sacred Heart so far to lose in the fashion they lost in last week with that late comeback, with all those injuries, factors outside of their control, and then to come in here into a hostile environment on the road and, and let's be honest, kind of get hit in the mouth there on that first drive. It would have been easy for them to kind of hang their heads a little bit, but they didn't. They rebounded quickly, they found their playmakers, made a couple of big stops, and they've gotten the offense rolling here. This is a resilient squad, and that's the one thing we heard from Coach. He said, look, you might knock us down, but we're not going to stay there. 10.25 to go here is the Knights. Next offensive series, Bogart's under center. Single receiver far side right. A little bit of motion in the backfield. Now option left, but behind the line, the ball carrier taken down. That was Doyle Marshall. Went option left on that play, and Minneapolis read it and stood him up for a loss. Well, and it's partially out of necessity, but you look at the running game from a week ago. Seven different guys carried the football at least once for the Sacred Heart team. You'd expect to see four, maybe five today. And they're trying to mix them up to keep themselves, you know, unpredictable and at the very least give the defense a couple of different looks to worry about. Ball spotted just beyond the 20-yard line, second down and 15. 940 left here in the first. Minneapolis struck first, and that's where we stand right now. 7-0 Lions. And Sacred Heart, pass over. Well, oh, that's a great catch up and over the middle. Pass is going to be caught at the 36, right at the first down marker. That's Bryson Gotti. And what, a, and what a ball. I mean, he threw that right into double coverage, but fearless out of Evan Bogart. You love to see that. He stretched out the body and brought it in, hauled it in. Gotti's one of the guys in this receiving core. They've got four receivers, all of them upperclassmen, that have hauled in at least one pass this season. They feel confident in all of them. And that spot looks dang close to the first down marker. But haven't signaled for third down or first down yet. Oh, we might have no. our first measurement of the season. I was wondering that, actually. <laughs> well, referees are kind of... Two in the middle, the white hat, another referee far side, and one on the near side, and kind of looking at each other. I'm going to be completely honest with you, Adam. I thought it was, yeah, and that's, I think that's the ah. right call. It looked like it was enough for a first down regardless, but there is a chop block call that's going to be declined, and they will take the first down. Single receiver now, far side right, near side left. Three in the backfield once again. Bogart with it. And a host of players in that pile right now. Bogart down at the bottom of it, and that's going to be a short loss for the Knights back to about the 35. Yeah, I think they tried to run a trap play there. It looked like they tried to pull the guard, and the guy that came through to fill the hole got his hands on Bogart before Bogart could make the read. So. 
not necessarily his fault, just a really, really lot of speed on that defense and that linebacking core. We've seen that on display today already. Oh, ball right back at the 36. We'll call it second down, no gain. Second and 10 for Sacred Heart. Single receiver far side now. Gotti under center. Or Bogart under center, I'm sorry. Snap and again trying to get a run out of that backfield and Minneapolis stands Sacred Heart up one more time. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the big plays today for the Sacred Heart offense have come through the air and you want to make sure you establish that run, but this is a front seven for Minneapolis that did not give up much, if anything, to Republic County a week ago. And as far as the running game has gone, they haven't given up much, save for that one big Matucci run to Sacred Heart here today. So that will be about a two-yard loss. The ball spotted between the 34 and 35. Under eight to play here in the opening half. Also want to remind you, halftime brought to you by Kansas Wesleyan University. And have the vo happen to have the voice of Kansas Wesleyan right to my left here as well. So we'll I'll pick your brain about that game tomorrow. We're coming up as the game rolls on. And Bogart under center, faking the backfield, and now he's got being chased. Two, now three lines in there with him. Dalton Kruger, another sophomore out there on the field. In on that tackle. Yeah, it was Braylon Smith and Brayden Peters both in on that. And I mean, the pursuit came before they even had a chance to look downfield. So a smart play to tuck it and just kind of preserve the yardage, but we'll set up a obvious punting down here for the Knights. Fourth and fourth and long, about fourth and 11, fourth and 12. Smith and Smith. Braden Smith and... Punt bounces down. Now run 25-30 near side, and it's going to be brought down on the carry. That was Mason Smith. You see some high schools do this, but it's always been interesting to me when you run two punt returners out there. It takes away a blocker, although you do get the lead blocker as the other returner. But the other thing that it does for you that I do like if you do punt the ball to one side or the other to try to avoid the return, it makes it tougher to do that. Mm -hmm. And that particular kick, it actually went by one of the Smiths, and actually the other one wound up picking it up. It's Minneapolis now back to the line. Run to the left. That looks like that's going to be a loss. Sacred Heart in the backfield forcing the loss of yardage. Let's see where they spot it. So that's going to be a good six-yard loss. Actually, seven on the scoreboard. Second 17 from the 30. Well, that's a huge play for Sacred Heart. Kudos, I believe, to the blitzing backer off the right side. Just gunned back there out of nowhere, and there was nowhere to go for Minneapolis. Rolling right now, Owen just swing past near side and going nowhere. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we got 11 on 11 here near field. It's Ryan Parks, the senior tight end for Minneapolis. And it's another big open field tackle for Sacred Heart. And this is what we needed to see out of them. We see it again. And for the second time in as many plays, that's Leon Rao who comes in and makes just a monster tackle for Sacred Heart. Something we talked about as well, some of the passing plays from week one for both of these teams. Some of the longer games, but pass caught double coverage and boy Ryan Parks pass from Justin double coverage and got it right to him big first down for the, Minneapolis you were saying about big yardage gains well <laughs> Well, but that, there he is again. I mean, that's the converted quarterback from a season ago. Ryan Parks bringing himself open for a big game, and all of a sudden Minneapolis is in business. I wanted to make the point that it seems like a very, very first or very fast first quarter. And speaking of very fast, on the carry, that was Owen just kept it himself. Brought down by a couple of knights. Dominic Matucci out there. 
The only freshman out there for either team thus far, but in on the tackle. But another first down for Minneapolis. Still 7 0. Minneapolis scored on its opening possession, and we stood at 7 0 for most of this first half. In the backfield, just. There's one out. End zone. And incomplete. It was right on the money down there to the corner on the fade route, but just not quite able to haul it in. And ultimately, that's going to lead to a second down and 10 here. But you see there, I mean, Minneapolis not afraid to take some deep shots here. They've already gone to the air deep a couple of times. That wasn't a bad place to throw at all either. Four and a half to go here in the first. Seven nothing Minneapolis. Driving once more. Here's the snap. Off to the right just. Hands it off and out of bounds with it. The ball carrier. Mason Smith with the carry. We talked a little bit before about what this Minneapolis team has been able to do as far as stopping the run. How about Sacred Heart stopping the run as well as Minneapolis has gone to the air for a couple of big gains. But aside from that, really, this is a Knights defense that's found ways to neutralize pretty much anything as far as the ground attack is concerned. Now you mentioned the first couple of offensive series for the Knights where Minneapolis kept bottling them up and tackling them for losses. But the Knights have been doing the same thing on their end as well for the most part. Logar two in the backfield alongside him. He's going to keep it. Pass. Left side caught. At the 10, the 5. And a trio of Knights bringing down the receiver. It's going to be first and goal for the Lions. It's Parks again, and I'll tell you what, for as big a role as he's played in this game, he really didn't impress all that much in the big win over Republic County. Had just one catch for 29 yards and one carry for five yards. That was all the production that they got out of their quarterback from a season ago, but I think that they've saved a little bit of the trickery, a little bit of the Maybe their bigger end of the game or the playbook for the Sacred Heart game, and now they're knocking on the door of the end zone. First and goal from the four, from the three, I should say now. Over the middle, and it's caught for a touchdown. Minneapolis up two scores now. It's 13 nothing. The Lions. That first and goal play, and only took him one play to punch it in, and now on for the PAT attempt. Snap is down, the ball is up, and good. Minneapolis up two scores now, 3.47 to play here in the first quarter. First half, I should say. Minneapolis up two scores now. It's 14-0 over Sacred Heart. You're listening and watching to Sacred Heart Football. Salinas Surgical Hospital is a high-quality surgical facility with a comfortable and home-like atmosphere. Together with our community's greatest doctors, we are committed to a patient care model where exceptional satisfaction is the norm and every patient feels like they are treated with respect, dignity, and compassion. Salinas Surgical Hospital is partially owned by a group of local community-involved physicians. Talk to your doctor about scheduling your next procedure with us. Salinas Surgical Hospital, your voice, your choice. It's portable restroom season, and your friends at Salina Septic Service are here to remind you there are options. Summer barbecues, festivals, fairs, they can bring you a top-of-the-line portable restroom. Keep those dirty feet out of your house and your female friends happy. Mm -hmm. Heck, they can even bring along a portable hand-washing station, because who wants Jim roasting marshmallows after he goes in the trees? Salina Septic Service, here for your freedom of those dirty little situations. Online at salinasepticservice.com. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Welcome back to Sacred Heart Football here on Salina Post. Hope you're enjoying watching our live streaming video here. A short kick taken out to 30. And a run that's going to be close to midfield. Nice play. Nice run there by Owen. Or by... Uh, Pretty sure that was Leon Rao again. 
for the Knights. Also, really quickly, going back to that touchdown. Beautiful thing about having the game streamed with live video and audio. We basically have our own replay booth, so we can take a look at things. I'm pretty sure that was Parks who gets in for another <laughs> touchdown today. So his uh, his first of the day, but a big one to put Minneapolis up 14-0. We talked a bit about uh, well, last week. Some of the games going along here. Sacred Heart. Little trickery there. Far side with it. A pitch and a pass, and ultimately, that was Doyle Marshall with the reception, and going to bring up a first down for the Knights. But I was starting to say, where I know you caught the coach Jennings as I did as well at practice, but they had those injuries last week, three concussions, and two hurt knees. So that's why some of the I know he talked to both of us, but that's that was the the big issue in the third quarter lasted forever it seemed like but right now we're 40 minutes in and we're 310 from halftime it's been a quick first quarter first half nap again and over the middle did he go down and get that nope it looks like the side judge is going to rule that an incomplete as it looked like he kind of bounced up to him off the turf but to your point I mean we heard it from coach he said the depth really impressed him he said a lot of these younger guys he didn't expect to get out there and see time didn't really know what they had with him as far as what they could provide on the varsity field and those guys ready to go got in and made an impact right away not the way you want to get him out there but yeah just, they got the playing time and had to step up nonetheless Sacred Heart coming over to the sideline here. I don't know if this is to get a play, to get some water. It looks like the officials are I wasn't sure huddled was up, and I think the, this is an official conference. They're talking right now. I don't know if this is about whether or not that last reception was a catch or incompletion was or wasn't a catch. We know the NFL has a hard enough time figuring out what is and isn't a catch. And they don't always get it you, right. You can only imagine at the high school level. But I like this. I like them taking the time, make sure they get the call right, sure. and make sure that the integrity of the game is preserved as that zebra conference continues down at about the 40-yard line. And, well, Adam, as is custom, you've got both coaches kind of creeping their way out of the field asking for an explanation. I'm not sure if either one's on. Well, looks like far side Norman Jennings and one of the referees over there. And Coach Flax He's is right about to the 40-yard marker, and he has been... Let's say politely requesting an explanation. Staying, staying uh, <laughs> somewhat patient. Well, you got to think, if you're sacred heart here, you got three minutes and two seconds to go. You really want to find a way to get something on the scoreboard before you go into the half. That is critical. Mm -hmm. So if you're the Knights, find a way to come through, get a score, and knock something in. But they're going to need a couple of big chunk plays, picking up three or four per play is not going to get it done with three minutes and two seconds left. Well, both teams have all their allotment of timeouts. Even then. <laughs> but. This is one of the longer breaks I've seen as now the lead official comes over and he'll talk to Tom Flax, the head coach of the Minneapolis Lions. I thought it might have been as simple as a timeout initially because I both teams, some of the players were moving toward their individual sidelines, but Coach Flax is frustrated about something, and I've noticed out of the ball, I think got moved up to the spot of the catch. So I think they're, well, no, but it's still second down and 10. So I'm not sure what this is about. Well, nonetheless, we play on. <laughs> well, the ball's been snapped. Too late now. Pitch in the backfield, left side. Boy, and bowling over with that, with the carry, I should say. That's Thomas Cheney. Thank you. Cheney, one of the many guys that got a, at least one carry in the season opener. Carried the ball five times for 12 yards and picks a little something up here to set up a more manageable third down and five. Single receiver either side now. Right and left. Oh, ball's out. I wonder if that was a false start as well. Well, and it looks like, at the very least, Sacred Heart got on it. So my guess is Minneapolis will just decline this penalty. Huh? 
Actually, he can't decline that at the high school level, so it'll back him up. Might actually be a blessing in disguise here for Sacred Heart as now it is at the very least not fourth down. It's a five-yard penalty. It does set up third down and ten. But you'd almost rather have third and ten than fourth and five right now. Right. As we approach the halftime break. So again, a single receiver to either side, far side right, near side left, motion in the backfield. Back with it, Bogart evades one tackle, and no. And that was that forward motion with the arm, but knocked away by one of the Lions and taken by Minneapolis. There's our first turnover of the game. And that's huge, but I mean, I will say for Bogart, he stayed in the pocket. We talked about that earlier in the game. That's one of his strong suits. He doesn't panic, he doesn't tuck and run when he knows he can still deliver a pass, but just did not feel the pressure coming from his blind side. Somebody got in there, got a hand on it. Now it's Minneapolis who have a chance if they can go the distance with 217 to go. With 217 left the first half, with the 41, first and 10, Minneapolis. Owen just in the backfield now, rolling to his right. Being pressured by a couple of the Knights now, short pass near side and catching it on a knee. It was Braylon Smith with the reception as we're going to roll in there. Two minutes here to go in the opening half. Boy, we've seen more and more high school quarterbacks make that pass since the emergence of Patrick Mahomes, haven't we? Absolutely. It's that quick, it's that quick little side armor that you just you never saw it until four or five years ago. Now in the shotgun. Makes the handoff. No, he does go to his left, and it's Ryan Parks on the carry. That'll be uh, another short run. Well, and if you're Sacred Heart, I mean, both teams still have all three of those timeouts. It might just get the ball back with a chance to go down and get something on the board. Well, Minneapolis, a couple of short runs, like kind of conservative, it would seem. Maybe just trying to play for halftime and just run that clock out. Well, as soon as you say that, <laughs> time out call by Sacred Heart. Don't forget to tune in tonight to KINA for the Kansas High School Scoreboard Show. Here are scores and game wraps from across the state of Kansas brought to you by Home Automotive Centers and Salina Surgical Hospital. It's Sacred Heart Football presented by Bennington State Bank. And if your business would like to support upcoming Sacred Heart games, we've got room for you. Just call Devin Haney at KINA or KINA or email Devin, Devin Haney at gmail.com, D E V I N H A N N E Y, Devin Haney at gmail.com, and support the Sacred Heart Knights. Come up here at halftime, brought to you by Kansas Wesleyan University. We're going to be talking with the principal of Sacred Heart, Mr. John Krajacek will join us. We'll ask him some of the goings on at Sacred Heart. But I said, Tyler, I wanted to bring up uh, Kansas Wesleyan. You're on the road. We were talking Southwestern, the mound builders, and we were talking a bit about what <laughs> I was a question I posed to you. What is a mound builder? Well, fortunately, I posed the question to someone that knows a whole lot more than I do. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a preseason tradition every year. The students of Southwestern go, and they do, in fact, with rocks, build a mound. So there you go. Literally. <laughs> That's exactly what you thought it was. In the backfield now, holding hold, boy, all day to throw it. Just rolling to his right now and just going to throw it away here on the near sideline. Oh, a one-handed catch by a Minneapolis assistant coach. How about that? Well, <laughs> I don't well, believe he was an eligible receiver. I but. think he's used up his eligibility, yes. <laughs> I don't know. In, in a, a post-COVID world, you never know who does and doesn't have eligibility left. That's a fair point. <laughs> one thirteen to go before halftime. And real quick, uh, Tyler, kickoff and pregame tomorrow for your game with the, with the Yotes. Yes, sir. 7.30 kickoff. We will be live for a countdown to kickoff coverage presented by Cad Law at 6.30 p.m. on KINA. Hope you'll come out and join us. A big game for Kansas Wesley and on the road looking to get to 2-1 and one and at you, Southwestern. Sorry, I'm going to step on you there. You called it, though, a, a tackle immediately from the punt. I was going to say you were right. They... I thought Minneapolis might be content to run the clock out, but the Knights did take a timeout, and the Knights get it back with just over a minute to play before halftime. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Jennings wants to approach this, because as far as we understand, this is not a Sacred Heart offense that is going to be known this season for hitting big home runs, but 
they do have the consistent rushing ability. They can pick up those three, four, five, six yard gains. So we'll see if they want to try to go for something big here to try to get points on the board or if they'll go a little more conservative and maybe just keep this on the ground and get to the halftime break down by two scores. Speaking of scores, our area scoreboard will be checking area games here as we receive scores. And that, the area scoreboard brought to you by Salina Surgical Hospital. 66 seconds to go here before intermission. Well, really, other than the two touchdown strikes from Minneapolis, a fairly even played game on both sides of the ball. Snap to Bogart. Rolling, rolling, looking now left side over the boy. Another great catch over the middle. That's complete. And a quick timeout called, and there's your answer. Coach Jennings wants to roll the dice, and I, I like this. I think that in this game, down two scores, you need to be aggressive, and I like that. They go for a big shot over the middle, call the timeout, stop the clock. As a young guy, too, one of the mentioned uh, Dominic Matucci, just a freshman out there. That was uh, Luke Colin, just a sophomore for Sacred Heart. Back again, caught from behind, but gets the throw away and gonna fly out of bounds. And I'm not 100% sure what happened there because the clock stopped for the chains to be reset and a timeout came off the scoreboard on Sacred Heart side, but then the clock wound again for another five or six seconds. Well, that one timeout they took, that was Sacred Heart, so maybe they were catching up on that one, but. Could be, could still be, not, good catch. But still, uh, like you said, though, the clock was running still, where, it, still, where it shouldn't have been. Well, it's still two timeouts in the back pocket of Coach Jennings here on a second and ten. Second and ten, ball back near midfield, spotted at the 48. In the backfield, rolling right again. Better covers that time for the Knights, and that's going to be a run or catch after the... How about run after the catch? Well, and, and there you go. Say, right? Find Matucci in space and let him do his thing. A lot of other guys are going to get tackled over the middle of the field. That's going to keep the clock running, make you burn a timeout. But Matucci just sidesteps, hits the juke, and gets himself to the sideline. He stops the clock himself. And third and short now for the Knights. Third and... Scoreboard says third and three. It looks more like third and two from up here, but... Be that as it may, third and short for Sacred Heart with about a half minute to go before the break. Pitch in the backfield, and that's going to be a big loss for the Knights all the way back to 44, the 45-yard line. And I would guess that clock's going to run. No, maybe not. thought the clock might run, but actually it... Wow, so Sacred Heart is going to call a timeout here with 17 seconds left on a fourth down and eight. And that tells me they are fully committed not only to trying to pick this up, but I think trying to pick it up, call that last timeout, maybe take a shot to the end zone here before all is said and done. But Conservative play would have been to go into the halftime break down 14, maybe punt it away. Nothing conservative about this, and I do like the call by Coach Jennings. Be interesting to see what they come off the sideline with. Also want to remind you here, when the Knights play at home, they have a huge home field advantage with Sage products from paper towels to soap. Items from ceiling to floor, you'll see products from Sage. You can get the same home field advantage at your home or office by visiting sageselects.com. And again, coming up here at halftime, we'll be talking with the principal of Sacred Heart. Mr. John Krajacek will join us. We'll chat about some of the goings on and happenings here about a, give or take a month into the new school year. Well, and the legend himself standing right behind us. He is. Looking forward to that halftime chat. But first, as you mentioned, 17 seconds, Coach Jennings setting something up and Let's see what he's got in store. There's a snap to his right is Bogart looking downfield. Pressured, short pass. And tackled here on the near sideline. Well, and that stops the clock That's with eight and a half. So you don't have to burn the last time out, but with that being on fourth down, it will be. Was it short? I believe it, it was, was short. Although, well, he didn't we'll miss see. If 
Yeah, the offense starting to jog off the field here. You got first and 10 set up, and yep, it's a turnover on downs. Minneapolis, it looks like, going to take over here with eight and a half seconds. Wouldn't be surprised if they just take a knee and headed the half up 14 0. And again, I mentioned, other than the two scores, really, really physical game on both ends for both teams, but Minneapolis got the opening score on their first possession back in the first, and then seven more here in the second to lead by two scores. As a few seconds remain before the break. There's a snap to just looking. Short pass left side and in open field with it. And now try to pitch, but that's as far as it goes. So <laughs> we've reached halftime here from Minneapolis. As again, we'll come back. Halftime sponsor is Kansas Western University. Playing at Southwestern tomorrow evening. Be Tyler Henry with the call on KINA. We're going to break in and we will come back with the high school principal, Sacred Heart. Mr. John Krajacek will join us as halftime brought to you by Kansas Western University. 14-0 at the break, Minneapolis on top of Sacred Heart. And you're listening and watching Sacred Heart Football on Salina Post, presented by Bennington State Bank. Whether on the field, court, or in the operating room, experience matters. A coach loves an experienced team just like a patient values an experienced doctor. Salina Ortho has ABOS board certified physicians with over 40 years of orthopedic service. If you need help staying active or just want to discuss options regarding the newest techniques and services and specialties that Salina Ortho provides, see one of our trusted physicians or visit SalinaOrtho.com. Salina Ortho, your voice, your choice, past, present, and future. When does normal acute pain become abnormal chronic pain? Chronic pain can be one of two types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Each type differs based on what causes it, what it feels like, and what treatments may relieve it. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain online at Salina Pain Clinic. Org. Salina Surgical Hospital is a high-quality surgical facility with a comfortable and home-like atmosphere. Together with our community's greatest doctors, we are committed to a patient care model where exceptional satisfaction is the norm and every patient feels like they are treated with respect, dignity, and compassion. Salina Surgical Hospital is partially owned by a group of local community-involved physicians. Talk to your doctor about scheduling your next procedure with us. Salina Surgical Hospital, your your voice, your choice. It's portable restroom season, and your friends at Salina Septic Service are here to remind you there are options. Summer barbecues, festivals, fairs, they can bring you a top-of-the-line portable restroom. Keep those dirty feet out of your house and your female friends happy. Heck, they can even bring along a portable hand-washing station, because who wants Jim roasting marshmallows after he goes in the trees? Salina Septic Service, here for your freedom of those dirty little situations. Online at salinasepticservice.com. Insurance is something we all need in our business, home, car, and life. But do you really understand what's covered and most importantly, what you are paying for? Hi, this is Rob Carlson in the Salina Office of Smart Insurance. Change is good, especially if you haven't looked at your insurance policy lately. I can help you understand what you need and where the gaps are in your coverage. We provide free quotes and take pride in looking out for you. Smart Insurance with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. Give us a call today. It's anniversary time at Vernon Jewelers. From September 1st through September 16th, Vernon Jewelers is celebrating their 139th anniversary. It's your chance to take 20% off store-wide on the highest quality jewelry in the area. Sale prices and 20% discount excludes loose diamonds, repairs, and special orders. For 139 years, people have been heading towards that iconic sign with Vernon Jewelers in downtown Salina, where it's the little things that matter since 1884. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School. Adam Coulter on the broadcast along with Tyler Henry and Avery Cadle on the camera this evening. Glad to have you with us here on Salina Post, listening and watching to the game here tonight. Coming up, uh, second half and post game, 
We're name a Vernon Jewelers Gem of the Game, also Hit of the Game, presented by Salina Pain Clinic and a Smart Play of the Game from Smart Insurance with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. As we get scores in, we'll have our area scoreboard brought to you by Salina Surgical Hospital and once again, home, uh, halftime rather, our sponsor, Kansas Wesley University. And we are joined now by the principal, Sacred Heart High School, Mr. John Krychek. Good evening. Good evening, Thanks for having me on today. There we go. Let me get your mic up. <laughs> Well, it's, what are we, about uh, not quite a month into the new school year, and just just in general terms, uh, I, parent-teacher conferences are coming up for some of the area schools, and we got there's all kinds of sports going on now, just in a general sense. What's uh, going yeah, on at Sacred Heart? Well, it's kind of hard to believe. We've, uh, we're have almost three and a half, four weeks into the school year. Um, we got off to a really good start. Uh, you know, we have obviously... Uh, outstanding group of seniors we have a senior class of uh, you know 41 42 students and they've demonstrated outstanding leadership um, to start off the school year we've uh, welcomed an uh, enthusiastic group of 38 seventh graders plus we had uh, eight or nine students that were new to our school that transferred in so um, I'm just uh, pleased with the way the start of the school year has taken place and again uh, I hope the parents are pleased as well parent teacher conferences We'll be here before we know it as well. And well, we're week two of the high school football season. We've got volleyball going on. We've got uh, other activities and sports. And a lot of a lot of good stuff going on um, at the school. Obviously, it's, that's the it brings a lot of uh, spirit to the school. We obviously have started uh, junior high uh, cross mm -hmm. country, junior high volleyball and football. They've already played uh, two two games already. Uh, we'll start a third game this uh, Thursday. Our high school uh, cross country team has performed. They've had uh, three meets already. Um, in fact, our, our girls uh, competed at the Heston meet and won, got first place out of 20 schools uh, yesterday at Heston. So we're proud of their effort. And the boys put in a good performance as well. So we're we're pleased with that. Um, our debate program uh, is off and running. We got about 10 to 12 students participating in that, and they'll be starting competitions here in the next couple of weeks. So. Uh, a lot of good stuff, both co-curricular and extracurricular activities uh, taking place. Absolutely, and uh, something, uh, you mentioned the 7th and 8th grade, the middle school athletes in their different sports. Something that when I was calling Sacred Heart Basketball back in the 2009-2010 season up through 2017 when the boys won the state basketball championship, it was always fun to talk about family in you know, literal terms but also as a metaphor but it's fun for me over the years to see the same last name pop up here over and again so whether it's siblings or even even second generation students for the nights. Oh, exactly right many of these kids uh, their parents went to Sacred Heart and even some of their grandparents uh, attended so there's a strong family connection uh, to the school and, and we have obviously there's they have siblings both in the high school. Some of these junior high kids have siblings in the high school, down in this grade school. This is a great connection, and the families not only uh, within each rela uh, related, but also uh, good connections throughout the, the school community. So, plays a very important role. Absolutely. Well, uh, something on your website I noticed on the Sacred Heart website. Uh, I mentioned a bit about this off air, but your homecoming. It looked like. Uh, the week that it was scheduled, there was a scheduling conflict and homecoming was rescheduled. Can you let us sure. give us any details on, on why and when it'll be now? You bet. Well, you know what? Uh, we uh, have been, for a lot of years, have wanted to plan, um, get alumni involved in a Hall of Fame, and we finally got that off the, due to the work of a lot of good people in, in the committee. We got an alumni weekend planned uh, for September uh, 23rd and 20, 22nd and 23rd. And that was the same week we had homecoming, and we really wanted to make sure that we separated the two events because each one has a lot of uh, brings a lot to the table. And so on, um, on we would recognize the class of uh, 74, 75 mm -hmm. at our uh, at our football game Friday night. They were the undefeated state basketball and state football champions uh, back year. then, undefeated both in football and basketball. So it's going to be a great opportunity for us to bring them back, be able to uh, recognize them at halftime, and and then also. Um, They've established a uh, Sacred Heart Hall of Fame, and so we're going to be able to honor our first uh, class of that uh, on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock at the Hall of Fame banquet. So big weekend planned for that. So we, we decided to give each one that special uh, weekend. Homecoming is the October 6th, 5th and 6th, um, so we move that way, and that way uh, we'll, we'll be able to uh, give proper due to the homecoming as well. So if I, my math is right, the alumni celebration, that's gonna, that weekend's going to be in a couple of weeks. And then the homecoming now will be in four weeks, yep. first week of October. You got that. And, uh -huh. uh, and the, the neat thing is that our homecoming week it's, involves a lot more of the kids in the high school. 
Um, and uh, they plan the whole week as far as the spirit activities, the pep rallies, um, all that different thing. And of course, they ends up with the, the coronation, and of course, they have a dance on Saturday night. So it's really a fun week for the students. They really get involved. It's not strictly high school. We involve the junior high as well. And so it's really a collaborative effort, all led by the students. And they do a really good job of planning, organizing, and, and carrying out the activities. Um, and again, with our alumni weekend on the 22nd, 23rd of September, I'm really pleased to be able to get the alumni back to the school. We've been wanting, like I said, to do that a long time, and, and we have a lot of distinguished alumni that we need to bring back and, and connect with the school. So I'm looking really looking forward to that weekend. And I know, too, the, the people that put something like that together and get a hold of all the alumni wherever, you know, wherever across the country or maybe overseas that they've moved to, I know it's a heck of a lot of work for uh, the crew that does that, too. It, it is. It takes a lot of communication and coordination to make that work. Um, and uh, to bring everybody back and, and again to recognize like, like those classes coming back and also the distinguished class that they're going to recognize that uh, takes a lot of coordination and, and, and effort. And so I really appreciate that. Joel Bicknell and Hannah Dahl, or Hannah Ben Little now, she got married, but uh, mm -hmm. those people have put on a lot of work to organize this weekend. Uh, and so I'm really pleased with their efforts and I look forward to a, a great weekend. Absolutely. Again, Coach John Krajacek joining us here at halftime here as night football continues here on Salina Post. And Coach, uh, I'll let you go with this, but out on the field, despite the two touchdown deficit for the Knights, you're out there, there's coaches out there, principal, you know, st faculty, staff out there, and fans, and well, just want to get your thoughts on this game. This, this, despite the score, they've been nice. They've been playing tough. I am. I am really pleased with their effort. They're out there fighting, competing. We're down four players, I believe, starters tonight because of injuries, and so we have some younger kids that are really stepping up and playing hard. Um, you know, Minneapolis has a really good, good, solid team, and they're and they're playing hard. But I've been really pleased with their effort. We got a lot of some sophomores out there and some younger kids starting for the first time, and and they're playing their tail off. And and I look for good things in the second half. We'll we'll get something going here and. And uh, I don't want they're not going to quit till the end of the, till the fourth quarter end. So absolutely, we've been talking about that too. That some of the younger guys out there, but some of the guys stepping up and stepping into those roles and those positions. And like I said, other than the the scoreboard, it's been fun to watch and really a proud moment for coach and some of those kids uh, that are seeing their first playing time at the varsity level. Oh yeah, and uh, no, they're they're competing. They're making plays out there, and that's all you can ask. And and uh, I just see them making progression as, they, as the game develops. You know, they're getting more comfortable in their role and, and find out, hey, I can compete here. Just uh, keep, keep playing, and, you know, next man up, and away we go. And, and again, I hope our, our, come, our kids can come back and play later on during the season. And, and, but right now, those younger kids are doing a good job filling in. Coach John, or, <laughs> I knew I was going to do that sooner or later. Principal of Sacred Heart, John Krajacek. Coach, thanks. And just mention this as well. Finally, on the road here for the first couple, but the next two will be at the Graves Family Swords Complex on the campus of Kansas Wesleyan, and next two at home. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, we look forward to playing at home. It's a great, it's a great uh, place to play. Great facility, one of the finest venues in North Central Kansas. So we're proud to call it home. All right, Adam, thank you so much. Thank you, Principal John Krajcik, joining us here at halftime. Sacred Heart football continues. You're watching and listening to Sacred Heart football, and it's brought to you. Presented by Bennington State Bank here on Salina Post. APAC Kansas Incorporated has been building the heartland from the ground up for over a century. From the supply of aggregate materials, hot mix asphalt, and concrete to the construction of roads and bridges, we do it all. You've seen our trucks, and now we want to hire you. APAC in Salina is growing, and we are hiring for all positions. From truck drivers to mechanics, general laborers, and construction, APAC has your next career. For more details, visit the job links page at salinapost.com. Great pay and benefits, APAC is an equal opportunity employer. The Bennington State Bank proudly supports local sports and wants each student to know that their hard work and talent is noticed and appreciated. At Bennington State Bank, they care about local communities and are committed to fostering long-term relationships through the delivery of excellent customer service, integrity, and fairness. From helping local businesses to supporting community youth and nonprofits to helping you purchase your dream home or invest in your future, Bennington State Bank is here to help. Give them a call to experience exceptional banking with hometown service. Bennington State Bank, your trusted hometown bank. 
member FDIC. Summer travel can damage and destroy your tires. Commercial Tire Centers encourages you to check for proper inflation. Underinflation or overinflation along with the extreme Kansas heat can cause a blowout, damage to your vehicle, and even cause accidents. Make sure your passenger car, truck, RV, and trailer tires are all ready to hit the road when you visit Commercial Tire. We'll even check your spare tire. Commercial Tire Centers, West Crawford and North Ninth in Salina. Commercial Tire Centers, where service is everything. Mowry Clinic is pleased to welcome obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Mariah Jones. Dr. Jones is a Salina area native and is excited to return to her roots and care for the women of North Central Kansas. She completed medical school and residency at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. Dr. Jones is joining Drs. Knox, Prendergast, Morgan, Ablard, and Roche at Mowry Women's Clinic in Salina. Schedule your appointment with Dr. Jones by calling 785-827-7261 or visit MoweryClinic.com to learn why you matter more at Maori. Hometown Disposal is a locally owned and operated waste hauling company offering residential and commercial trash service. Hometown Disposal offers front load, roll off, and rear load disposal bins for all your waste hauling needs. Let Hometown Disposal assist you with all your daily, weekend, or seasonal cleanup jobs. Hometown Disposal offers waste disposal options that are simple, affordable, and stress-free. Hometown Disposal is the right choice for families, local business owners, and general contractors. Contact Hometown Disposal, Salinas Premier Mere Waste Hauling Solution. Looking to take the next step in your career? Consider an MBA from Kansas Wesleyan. You can complete the program fully online in as little as one year, and your last class is free. Want to be a part of one of the region's fastest growing universities? Visit kwu.edu slash MBA today. That's kwu.edu slash MBA. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Welcome back to Minneapolis, home of the Lions, as Minneapolis leads it by a couple of scores here at the break. It's 14 nothing over Sacred Heart. I want to say thank you again to John Krychek, Sacred Heart principal, for joining us here at halftime. And also, well, Bennington State Bank, they're Tyler endearing themselves to the crowd right now. They, they paid for all the tickets, the tabs on them. Free admission for everyone here tonight in Minneapolis for this one. And giving away some prizes now. We hear that over the PA here and there, but just gave away a little cold hard cash. It sounded like on the field for her. I think they were they weren't kicking. I kind of it was a long it was a long passing okay. Kansas, Kansas and Corp that they ran. So yeah, a little a uh, little fun here at halftime by Bennington State Bank. And as you mentioned before, they put the bill for all of the admission for today's game. So everybody here got in for free, courtesy of Bennington State Bank and our uh, our friends over there. Very cool gesture, and again, just like I said earlier, too, both teams, Second Heart traveled well from Salina, and really looking at both sides of the stands, great crowd tonight, and weather-wise, we're down to 84, and going the right direction. The sun, oh, at twilight now, but looking at mid to upper 70s by the time this one's said and done, a beautiful night, and we're glad you're with us here on Salina Post. Thanks again to Bankton State Bank, and also want to thank some of our other sponsors as well, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Salina Septic Service, Commercial Tire Center, Hometown Disposal, Salina Ortho, Apex Shears, and Mowry Clinic, proud sponsors of Sacred Heart Football, and if your business would like to support upcoming Sacred Heart games, we have room for you. Just call Devin Haney at K-I-N-A or email him, Devin Haney at gmail.com. That's D-E-B-I-N. H-A-N-N-E-Y at gmail.com and support. Let's take it heart. High school sports. Halftime brought to you by Kansas Wesleyan University and mentioned earlier back in the second quarter the, the voice of the Coyotes alongside here. Tyler Henry. Night game tomorrow night. Road game tomorrow night. But you've already, they had the rival, they, the rival early morning game last week. 11 o'clock kick, I believe. You were on the air at 10 o'clock as uh, the Yotes up into the Swedes, and then the week prior, your week one, 
I want to say Missouri. I know it's yeah, out, of state. In, out in Evangel of all places. That's they, it. Uh, they come over from the Heart of America Conference, the only KCAC team to not be in the state of Kansas. Of course, the Kansas Collegiate Athletics Conference. But yeah. we have one team in Missouri out there now. We made the trip down to Nixa. And I'll tell you what, they are going to give some people in the KCAC some trouble this year as they did to Kansas Wesleyan in a tight 17-7 loss. Is Oklahoma Wesleyan still... Not for football. Okay, I got not you. Not for football. So it's not every sport. But for basketball, of course, and gotcha. I believe baseball later on in the year as well. That's when I wouldn't necessarily look so forward to call. It's kind of like last week. It was the Knights versus the Knights. And, well, like tonight, I want to remind you as well that uh, Devin Haney is out at uh, Gypsum on KINA. You can listen to that one this evening as well. But uh, it's the Beloit Trojans and the Southeast of Saline Trojans. And... I was going to mention Oklahoma Wesleyan and Kansas Wesleyan. It's one of those games that you can't just say Wesleyan. You almost have to say the full name because or getting confused, I guess, well, when you're well, calling and, it. And to be fair, you get, bless, bless Devin Haney's heart because the Trojan War gets interesting. Not only do you have the two Trojan mascots on each team, but we both called a basketball game a good six or seven years ago where the ten basketball players on the floor, again, for the Trojans and the Trojans, shared a combined four last names. And so many, uh, you know, whether it be siblings, cousins, kids that have grown up together, and not surprising. And I remember you said that off air at once, and I thought I was with Sacred Heart a few years ago. It was a small tournament in Lost Springs, Kansas, home of the Center Cougars, and I actually had uh, four of the five girls on that team with the same last name, sisters and cousins. It gets to be a little interesting at times, Adam. Really quickly, we do have a couple of scores to pass along here from halftime. Rock Creek, after losing to Southeast of Saline in their season opener, they've bounced back well. They lead St. Mary's 26-6. to That game is at the half as we speak. A couple of other games going on around the NCAA. Of course, here it's Minneapolis leading Sacred Heart 14 to nothing. Ellsworth is up 56 to nothing on Republic County. That is your halftime score, I believe, at Ellsworth. And then I got an update from Devin himself a little while ago. The game was not quite to halftime yet, but SES jumped out to an early 24-6 lead over Beloit. That was still in the first quarter. A couple of other scores from the area. Clay Center leads Chapman 34 to nothing at the half, and El Saline holds a narrow 12-8 lead over Hanover. And you mentioned some of those NCAA league teams. Ellsworth, that's who's coming here next week as they'll take on Sacred Heart for their home opener. And Minneapolis, these Lions will play southeast of Saline next Friday in week three. So we got some of the kind of trading off some of the opponents here in the league and some of the area teams. But again, next week, the Knights will open up the home portion of the slate. They'll take on the Ellsworth Bearcats, who you said up big against those Republic County Buffaloes. And meanwhile, southeast of Saline, a big lead. It's kind of surprising. Beloit's always, as long as I've been here in Kansas, one of the powerhouse teams typically in 3A but and in this league in particular but well to be fair it is it is a southeast of Saline squad that has won the last five so trying to go for six in a row but you're right that's always a tough Beloit team and I'll tell you what watching this game as well between Minneapolis and Sacred Heart I think has only proven to me the NCAA this year very it, good from top to bottom I was just going to say that I know you talked with both coaches uh, throughout the week and that's one of the things there's you know I know Republic County struggling but you can't take a night off or any one of these teams in the league Halftime brought to you once again by Kansas Wesleyan University. I want to thank uh, John Krajacek, the principal of Sacred Heart, for joining us. 12 minutes up on the clock and just about set for the start of quarter number three, Tyler. Yeah, and we'll see what adjustments both of these teams make at the half. I think, though, Sacred Heart showed a lot of really promising signs as far as life late in that second quarter and even in the first quarter as well offensively. They just need to string together a drive, get in the red zone, and get themselves on the scoreboard get them a little bit closer. But they will have a tall task. They will be on defense to start the second half. 12 on the clock, 14 nothing to score. So what better thing to do than to win a rifle, a small package, and a thousand bucks? That don't get it. I want the thousand bucks. How's that sound? Giving away some more money. All right, make it happen. <laughs> and here is the opening kickoff, end over end. It's going to fall here near side, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 21. And Minneapolis is now going to move right to left, and the Knights left to right. Uh, 
as you said, Minneapolis going to start on offense to start this second half. Minneapolis quick out of their huddle in the shotgun. Hand off right side and wrapped right up. It's Braylon Smith on the carry. And wrapped up for a short game for, Minne or for Minneapolis. A couple of other halftime scores for you. Well, we've got a brief moment. Abilene leads Concordia 28-7. Derby is up 35-0 on Salina South. And Juanigo, who made the state championship game in 4A after losing last week, well, they've bounced back well at halftime. They lead Marysville 42 to nothing. Mm. Another lopsided score here in the area with an area team. Another handoff and Bunch of white jerseys converged. That'll be another short gain. Maybe one. Oh, at third and eight from the 37. I'll bring up a third down now for Minneapolis. Hey, you mentioned Marysville. I'll be up in that area. I believe it's week five. Sacred Heart's back on the road after a couple of home games. They'll go up and play Blue Rapids. And that game actually, or that town, I should say, a small town here in Kansas, right up in that area just south of Marysville and right up near the Nebraska border. Snap and going to the right and out of bounds. Can be fourth and long for Sacred Heart. Or for Minneapolis, I'm sorry. Be fourth and five. Just underway here in the third quarter, Minneapolis and Sacred Heart. As Minneapolis going to punt away. Line drive kick taken at the 30. Matucci with that speed we talked about, and he's going to go for about a 13-yard run on the return. Well, and they love his versatility, and what better way to get your playmaker out in the open space than to get him out there on the punt return. I, I really like the call. I like the idea for Coach Jennings, and we'll see how they use him offensively. But, Adam, what kind of adjustments offensively are you expecting to see Sacred Heart make here in the second half? Well, they just had, they had the one turnover just to take care of that ball. Bogart's under center for Sacred Heart. One option left, going to keep it himself and brought down. Short game for the Knights. I was kind of racking my brain a little bit with that question. Well, there's Matucci again on the rush. And I think he really is the, the centerpiece of this offense. Obviously, it all comes down to quarterback play at a certain point with Bogart, but you get Matucci the ball in the right places at the right times, and he can make defenses pay. Center again, Bogart for the Knights. Pitch off to the left, and it's going to be a loss for the Knights. And for the Knights, another adjustment, just some of those big plays early on. Minneapolis, with the pressure, broke the line in several offensive possessions for losses for the Knights. Try and read that defense a little better. Third and long now for the Knights. Just over nine, actually just under nine, I should say. Now 14-0. Sacred Heart third and about 12. Nice in formation one more time. And the snap rolling to his right is Bogart looking downfield, still looking. Slung a pass, but it's incomplete. 
And it'll be fourth and long now for the Knights. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a dangerous pass to bring that ball back across your body. But we have seen Bogart, as he's kind of gotten comfortable, as he's gotten settled back into his role at quarterback, where he saw time a season ago. I mean, he's looked awfully good, and we're still just kind of waiting for that big breakout play. But it'll have to wait for another drive as the Knights are out in punt formation. And really quickly, Adam, how great is the, uh, the, the light up down marker? That is a new one, but I, I love it. I thought it was uh, not neon, but I didn't realize it was a light, but that's great. I didn't eyeball that earlier. I don't think I've ever seen one like that before. No! Left side running with it, 40, 45, 50, in open space to his right now. And a big run on the return. Mason Smith. Down to seam and a big return for Minneapolis. And that is a big return for Minneapolis as they get set up and we'll see how they can adjust here as they come back out offensively. And obviously got just enough to stay ahead, but I'm sure they would like more here in the second half. Trying to ride that momentum of big play. They're going to start first and 10 from the Knights half of the field. This will be a short run to the right. Oh, not as short as I thought initially. So we're approaching the eight-minute mark now of the third. 14-0 Minneapolis, and the Lions driving, looking for their third score of the night. Minneapolis spreads it out here. Snap in the backfield, a run, trying to turn the corner near side on the left and taken out of bounds. Really quickly, Adam, do have that halftime score for you. Southeast is lead up 38 to six on Beloit. It's just, I mentioned it off air too. It's just, it's strange to hear Beloit down by a score like that. It's just, it doesn't happen. A, well, and they gave a, they gave a really good Ellsworth team that brings everybody else back. Uh, a run for their money a week ago. So Absolutely. just things to keep an eye on in the league. Run out of the backfield, and that is going to be good for a first down for Minneapolis. Spreading out the offense again, single receiver to either side. Right up the middle with it. And carrying the pile. A host of players it looked like for both teams there. It's going to be about a seven or eight yard gain on first down. I mentioned back in the first half, it seemed like a really quick moving opening 24 minutes in. A run now left side. This is going to be six for Minneapolis. Touchdown. Well, and that looked and felt pretty easy. Owen just on the ground. That'll be his first rushing touchdown, I believe, of the season. As just did his fair share of damage on the ground last week, but didn't find his way into the end zone. And he picks up a big score here to make it a three-possession game. Just over six to play here in the third, and now 20-0 with the PAT pending. And just right back there is a place kicker to... Attempt the PAT, might have been partially deflected, but it goes end over end to the right of the goalpost. Well to the right, and it's going to remain 20 to nothing. Minneapolis up three scores now, 6.07 to play here in the third. And Minneapolis 20, Sacred Heart nothing. You're listening and watching the Sacred Heart Football on Salina Post, presented by Bennington State Bank. 
Your next visit to the doctor for an upcoming procedure or surgery should start with a conversation about Salina Surgical Hospital. Hi, this is Gerilyn Diedrich, and we are truly committed to fostering your health and well-being. From outpatient procedures to inpatient stays, you will feel the difference in our excellent care and compassion. Talk to your doctor about scheduling your next procedure at Salina Surgical Hospital. Your surgical experience is our specialty. Salina Surgical Hospital is partially owned by a group of local community-involved physicians. It's anniversary time at Vernon Jewelers. From September 1st through September 16th, Vernon Jewelers is celebrating their 139th anniversary. It's your chance to take 20% off store-wide on the highest quality jewelry in the area. Sale prices and 20% discount excludes loose diamonds, repairs, and special orders. Back here at Minneapolis as the Lions score for now the third time. The PAT has missed. But the Lions up and even 20 against Sacred Heart, 20 nothing, and pitching a shutout. The kick can go out of bounds here on the near sideline. Looks like actually you're going to spot this. Looks like the 33 yard line. Sacred Heart hanging tough, but one score at a time. Minneapolis is extending its lead. And now three scores. Well, and, and this is the thing. I mean, you look at the scoreboard, it looks like Minneapolis has dominated this game. But Sacred Heart, it, it doesn't feel like they've ever really gotten out of it. And they're certainly not out of it on the scoreboard. But you got to find a way to turn this into a long drive and get six, seven if you can, as time's starting to become a factor in this one with 6.07 to go in the third. Bogart back under center. Single set back. And nearly sacked with some pressure and dumped off to the left side. And this will be a tackle for loss. The ball loose. Quick pass out to number four. Doyle Marshall is good, but he is met quickly by Mason Smith of Minneapolis. And the ball Doyle Marshall, Marshall with the reception, but it's going to be another loss for the Knights as second and pushing 20. Long second down here with the ball spot at 29. Second down at about 18, 19. Second down, take it hard. Nice back up to the line. And some more pressure by Minneapolis now. Three blue jerseys given Chase Bogart. Runs away from three defenders now. Gets a block near side, still on his feet. Up to the 40 and... Knocked out of bounds at about the 42, 43 yard line here on the near sideline. Well, and that was actually in there at a in there at quarterback. That was Michael Matucci. So maybe a change here as we saw Matucci take the snap, drop back like he was going to pass and then scramble, but utilized all of his speed. And we'll see whether he stays in at quarterback here for this next possession or, or for this next play rather, or whether they switch it back to Bogart. And really making something out of nothing as he was well, they were already at second and long, but well into the backfield, but evaded three different line defenders and got a nice gain out of it. Oh, 14 yards on the gain, third down and six. And regardless of who's doing what, it's the two of them back in the backfield here. But yeah, it looks like they've gone here and switched back to Matucci as the quarterback is... I think we had somebody limping off the field here for Minneapolis, and now we're ready to resume. Under six to play, third quarter here from Minneapolis. Lions 20, Knights nothing. And Matucci under center. Snap to him, rolling to his right again, getting rid of it, and that's, boy, dangerous pass and nearly picked off. And I'll tell you what, he's lucky that wasn't picked off because that was a tight ball into double coverage. And you had, for Minneapolis, Chase Johnson just all over that. Tried to throw it back across his body, and it sets up fourth down, and now a decision for the Knights who are, I wouldn't quite say in no man's land. They are still very much in their own territory. Got to be careful if you go for it here, but they know that time is winding down. Looks like it'll... The punt formation for the Knights. Yep, no surprises there. I wouldn't look for a fake, but you never know. 
low snap, and the kick is up. High kick, taking out the 30, fair catch call for Waldy spot between the 30 and 31, and the ball back to the Lions with a three-score lead already. And so it's Minneapolis once again setting up shop offensively, and this is where you got to be careful if you're Sacred Heart. I'm not saying that another score puts the game out of reach, but given how much or how little time left or is left on the clock, it just seems like you do not want to see Minneapolis cross that stripe one more or one more time. I think that would effectively ice it for Minneapolis. Just the Knights haven't had really any big plays to speak of that I can think of. Well, and you wonder if that's why they've gone back to Matucci at quarterback. Is you know he does give you the ability to scramble, but it takes out your ability to get him the ball in open space, which is something that worked out really well for the Knights in that first half. All right. It's going to be a big penalty on Minneapolis here. It's going to back them all the way. First and 10 for Minneapolis. There's a snap. Just looks right. Gives it right. This will be two or three yard gain. Far hash. Making his way outside past the 25. That's about a gain of six. Sec call it second and four. Actually, second and three up on the scoreboard. I'll go with that. Minneapolis with it at their own 27. Spreading it out on offense. Twin receivers near side left for Minneapolis. run up the middle. Had me faked that a little bit there. But that's going to be a run good for a first down for the Lions. I think he's played four positions so far. He's played a <laughs> slot receiver. He's played... He's been all over the place. You've, been, you've got that right. He, they, have, they have not been shy about their usage of him. QB, DB. Does a, just about does it all. Another, another nice run. And boy, if that ankle tackle's not made there midfield, that might be Braylon Smith for pay dirt. As he, there wasn't a lot in front of him other than green grass. Well, and that's something else we've seen. I mean, that was an issue for Sacred Heart a couple of years back. I mean, not really so much a year ago, but two and three years ago, open field tackling was really a problem for this team. They've shored that up. That really has not been an issue for them in this game, and they haven't gotten gashed for any massive gains. A couple of big passing plays early in the first half, but they've held it together. They just have to get a little bit more consistency on offense. Single receiver to both sides, now man in motion. Right to left. And a handoff to the near side. But another boy, great run in space and a great tackle as well on the other end. Yeah, Mason, Mason Smith gets himself out in the open space. And right now you can really see as we've got a night down on the field. But Minneapolis just utilizing the wider areas of the field to their advantage. And it has helped them pick up some yards and bunches. And this is the last thing you want to see if you're a fan of Sacred Heart, is they can ill avoid or ill afford to lose anybody else. Really methodical drive thus far. There some short carries, picking up some big chunks of yards and chewing up some of that clock as well and trying to keep the drive alive and possibly get that fourth score. Well, and while we've got the player down, let's go ahead and take a quick break. You are watching and listening to Sacred Heart Football here on the Salina Post. Salinas. 
APAC Kansas Incorporated has been building the heartland from the ground up for over a century. From the supply of aggregate materials, hot mix asphalt, and concrete to the construction of roads and bridges, we do it all. You've seen our trucks, and now we want to hire you. APAC in Salina is growing, and we are hiring for all positions. From truck drivers to mechanics, general laborers, and construction, APAC has your next career. For more details, visit the job links page at salinapost.com. Great pay and benefits, APAC is an equal opportunity employer. Back in Minneapolis, Adam Coulter and Tyler Henry up here in the booth and also always want to say thanks as well to Avery Cato who is operating the camera today. So you got the video and the audio and we appreciate you listening and watching to Sacred Heart Football here on Salina Post presented by Bennington State Bank. 20 nothing in Minneapolis out of the injury timeout. First down now as they continue their march down the field looking for a fourth score. Clock under three and a half now and up the middle. Looks like a short gain for the Lions. Well, and for Minneapolis, I'm not saying that you go into clock killing mode this early in the game, but they're going to be content to keep the ball on the ground here and at the very least help tick things down and into the fourth quarter as that has kind of been their most efficient method of offense here in this game, let's call it. Oh, second and eight, second and seven actually from 31. Rolling to his right, just looking downfield. Oh, long pass and that's going to be, did he get in? Just short. And that was the last thing the Knights needed. Oh, and the funny thing is, I think that was the back that sprung free. I mean, they, they faked the handoff to him, and you can say that Sacred Heart read it if you want, but it looked like they kind of had a blown coverage off that side. Not only would he have been good there for a, a big gain on the ground, but he ends up springing himself open in the passing game. First and goal now for Minneapolis, knocking on the door one more time. And that's going to be a handoff and a carry and a touchdown for Minneapolis. 26 0. Devin, once again, just plenty of room up the middle. Looks like Braylon Smith, who will carry that in for the score. And that's the one that Minneapolis was looking for. At the very least, they will feel a lot more comfortable and confident in their lead following that touchdown. And on for the PAT. Just. Gonna hammer one through again. That one good. I want to remind you, our area scoreboard brought to you by Salina Surgical Hospital. Halftime sponsor has been Kansas Western University. Our gem of the game brought to you by Vernon Jewelers. We'll name that here in the fourth quarter during post game. Also, the hit of the game presented by the Salina Pain Clinic. And our smart play of the game from Smart Insurance with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. We'll name all those, and we thank those sponsors and all of our sponsors here for Sacred Heart Football, including APAC Shears, Mowry Clinic, Salina Ortho, also Hometown Disposal, Commercial Tire Center, Salina Septic Service, and Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. The Salina Pain Clinic hit of the game. It doesn't get much, uh, much easier than that from no. the sponsorship standpoint. That just sounds cool. At the end of the third quarter, well, if Sacred Heart's going to do something, they've got to do it now. 2.18 left to go third quarter, and you just get the feeling it's got to be on this drive. It does feel kind of like now or never time, given how well Minneapolis has been able to keep the ball on the ground and kill some clock here. And you got to think, Sacred Heart. Time by the essence here, late third and down four scores. Got to be a little more aggressive. We will match that up to Kennedy Sheets. Offensively, and we will announce the winner of uh, whoever owns that yard line this year. So Minneapolis will kick it back to the Knights. As we approach the two minute mark here in the third, Minneapolis up 27 0. And 
End over end kick right to the near side. 25, 30, 35, and... Yeah, thank you, Tyler, for picking up some of these numbers, too, where it... Well, that was, Michael, that was Michael Matucci, but I'll, I'll tell you what, that's a bold move to kick it right to Matucci if you're the Lions. I mean, that's... Playing with he's, fire. He's been the guy that's gashed you all, day, all, all night, and you give it right to him, you give him a chance in space. Absolutely. Yeah. If he can find a seam, and he can go for a while, but he's got the room to do it. Well, and here we go again. Matucci lines up under center at quarterback, Bogart behind him. So they have stuck with Matucci as their QB here. Snap to Matucci, gives it off left side and then carry. It's like a short game on the far side of the field. Yep, and that was the junior Doyle Marshall on the carry on the outside there once again. Picks up a short gain. And again, if you can get those three, four yards on every single play, you never have to punt mathematically, but still looking for the uh, the big hitter every now and then are the Knights, who have quieted down a bit here against a very good, let's face it, Minneapolis defense. I know you mentioned it earlier as well, and we talked about where we both made contact with both head coach Tom Flax and Norm Jennings for their respective teams. Really good NCAA league this season. Snap and in the back of Matucci. Wanted to run, but bottled up quite quickly. He's across the 40, and it'll be up third down. Well, you got to think too. I mean, this clearly the plan was for Bogart to be the quarterback coming into this game for Matucci. He probably took a majority of his practice snaps this week at wideout, at running back, everywhere else. Now he's got to settle back into a rhythm, but you alluded to it earlier in the broadcast. He had four touchdowns last week against Wichita Trinity. I guess that was just kind of, kind of an oddity that two rushing, two passing, and he's not starting a QB the next week, so. That's why Coach Jennings is in that position, and I'm not. Matucci back under center as we're under a minute to play here in the third. Motion in the backfield. Matucci rolling to his left. And the Lions are going to force a short loss here and bring a fourth down. Just heard the PA announcer give a tackle to a handful of Lions. Pack of Lions is right there. Den of Lions? You got, you got options. Pack of Lions. Well, I think it's a pack. Big Cats? Pride of Lions. Pri there you go. See, that's why you get paid the <laughs> big bucks. Yeah. That's why I'm just doing the color commentary. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's going to do it for the third quarter. The clock winds down. After three, Minneapolis pitching the shutout. They lead Sacred Heart. Lions 27, Knights 0. You're listening to Sacred Heart Football. Summer travel can damage and destroy your tires. Commercial Tire Centers encourages you to check for proper inflation. Underinflation or overinflation along with the extreme Kansas heat can cause a blowout, damage to your vehicle, and even cause accidents. Make sure your passenger car, truck, RV, and trailer tires are all ready to hit the road when you visit Commercial Tire. We'll even check your spare tire. Commercial Tire Centers, West Crawford and North Ninth in Salina. Commercial Tire Centers. Where service is everything. Mowry Clinic is pleased to welcome obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Mariah Jones. Dr. Jones is a Salina area native and is excited to return to her roots and care for the women of North Central Kansas. She completed medical school and residency at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. Dr. Jones is joining Drs. Knox, Prendergast, Morgan, Ablard, and Roche at Mowry Women's Clinic in Salina. Schedule your appointment with Dr. Jones by calling 785-827-7261 or visit MowryClinic.com to learn why you matter more at Maori. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Welcome back to Minneapolis. The final 12 minutes up on the clock as switch sides of the field one more time. Knights are going to punt it fourth and medium and this is going to go, well that's a long that was a nice kick but it goes out of bounds well over the returner's head. Just underway in the fourth. 27-0 our score. Well, and this is where you find out what you've got as far as grit is concerned. I will say this. I heard from Coach Jennings. We both had a chance to speak to him before this game, and he said, look, it was a tough loss. We're not going to make any, any mistake about that. But 
He was happy with the positives that he saw from his team. These guys continue to battle. The word he kept using was resilience. And if there's one thing we know about the Sacred Heart team, it doesn't matter if the score feels insurmountable, they are not going down without a fight. So be good to see what they've got in the tank here in quarter number four as they turn things back over to the defense and look to get a stop here. And even though it looks lopsided on the scoreboard, it really touchdown each to the quarters actually two in the third for Minneapolis and now a run here near side for Minneapolis 1140 were just underway here in the fourth but despite I bring up that score but despite the score I think coach Jennings has again his team is battling all four quarters well, and the one thing with Sacred Heart, it's not going to get any easier next week. They will be at home for the first time all year, but it's going to be against a really, really good Ellsworth team that's sitting on the outside looking in of a top five ranking in Class 3A. Yeah, they finally get a home game next Friday, but if you want to call it that, that's, that's your reward for getting to play on your home field. Well, it's not going to be much easier for Minneapolis either as well, they will hit the road and take on Southeast of Saline yep. next week. So two of the top dogs that could be fighting it out for the top of the NCAA will face off against two teams that are kind of just up-and-comers, but I will say have really shown me a lot and really impressed me with their fight here in these first couple of weeks, both Minneapolis and Sacred Heart, regardless of who comes out on top of this one. You mentioned Ellsworth. There's a snap Minneapolis. Short gain on... Third down, I was going to bring up, and speaking of Ellsworth, week four, Ellsworth and Southeast, that's going to be a fun one. I believe week eight, Ellsworth and Southeast. All right. That's right, that's right. I stand corrected. I only, know, I only know that because You're right. they played week eight last year, you're on the flip-flop schedule, so it's the you're same, right. same week, same teams, and then you just kind of flip the locations on them, but... That, I mean, that was the game for the league championship a year ago. Both teams came in at 7-0. I wouldn't be shocked that both teams are 7-0 come week 8 again this year. And that'll be interesting, too, in week 8, being that close to playoff time and see what's all on the line. Long for the punt, I'm sorry. So the Knights are going to get it back, and they'll start on the Minneapolis half of the field. It's a good starting field position, but again, with the clock winding down, you got to punch something in, as you said. Well, and, and look, even if you don't make the comeback and get the win here today, if you're Sacred Heart, any points that you get here in the fourth quarter, you take that momentum into your matchup next week with Ellsworth. I mean, you're looking for something positive to keep in the back of your mind, to take with you through another good week of practice, and to take with you into next Friday's game. And one thing that comes to mind, too, is just... Despite the players they lost last week, they they had to make quite a few adjustments at positions. Something not to be overlooked either. So Matucci back in there, quarterback once again. Pass over the middle. Short gain and one white jersey smothered up by about three or four lines. And that was Evan Bogart. So now you see the flip-flop of the target and the receiver as Bogart hauls it in from Matucci. Matucci's got an aggressive drop back, but it allows him to get to that sideline. And I think what that sets you up for is if there is a seam there along the sideline, he can tuck it and run. We've seen that a couple times already today. And you know he just would love to do that right here. Just to get anything on the board for the Knights. And that's going to be a loss in the backfield, tackled in the backfield. It's going to bring up third and long and about third and 11 now. Yeah, that was one Matushi to another as Mike handed it off to Dom, but get the loss on the play, it sets up a third and long. and. Now uh, would likely see them drop back and take a pass here on third and 12. You mentioned Dominic Matucci, just a freshman out there, and that jumps out of me just because both teams really senior heavy. 
Dom, just a freshman for Sacred Heart. Motion in the backfield. Looking right now, rolling left is Matucci. Giving chase and only got popped by one of the Lions. And short game, but it's like I get paid for at the end of the play, too. Well, Minneapolis has been spying him out there. They've had a guy more or less responsible for keeping Michael Matucci in front of him at all times. Doesn't matter what the receivers do. Doesn't matter what the backs do. He is responsible for tracking Matucci, and that's really been effective because you see it on that play. You had pursuers from behind. He steps up. Now you got three Lions there to make the tackle. The pride, if you will. There you go. And just that mentality of got the, I don't want to say the star player, but one of the best night players on the field, not letting him beat you. Make somebody else do it, or try to. Single receiver to both sides, right and left. One back in the backfield and just nowhere to go. Yeah, that's the second time they've tried to run Matucci up the middle and try to catch Minneapolis off guard going up the gut. Minneapolis has been keen to it both times, and that'll be another turnover on downs here to get the Lions first and 10 with 7.07 left to go. And now with a four-score lead, look for Minneapolis. I just look for them to run the ball, chew up some clock, and finish up this home win tonight. A little dump pass and what, another nice game for Minneapolis. Yeah, another big run for Ryan Parks. He's been the guy and continues to pick up big gains. First and 10, ball right on the 40 for Minneapolis. Just about straight across from me. Snap again. Around the corner right side, and that's gonna be another short game for Minneapolis. Well, I do wanna say a special thank you to the folks here at Minneapolis for giving us such a great setup. We got our own radio booth, we got power, we got internet, what else could you want? A Gatorade. Oh, man, <laughs> always something. <laughs> I just need something cold and liquidy. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. Second down, and we'll call it eight. Up and going now. They'll bring up second down for Minneapolis. Looks like a bad snap. Waving it off, so. Well, and that was Owen just that time. The ball kind of landed right in front of him. That's the kind of the awkward thing about high school football is you put a knee down with your hand on the football you are down so I mean he had to fall on it but you kind of just have to accept the loss any other level of football he probably would have had a chance to pick it up and make something of it well if there's one positive for his Lions it despite the loss of yards it keeps the clock rolling as we approach five minutes to go in the game Just back under center. He's rolling to his right. Quick pass, right side and right down the near sideline. And touchdown saving, shove out of bounds there. Inside the 20. Yeah, it's another big carry for the junior, Zach Nelson, showing off the speed, getting to the sideline and just cutting it upfield for a big gain as Minneapolis is looking for their second potential 30-point performance after a big blowout win of Republic County in week one. And I'll tell you what, don't sleep on the Lions. I, that game between Minneapolis and Beloit is going to be interesting. Well, it would be if the two played each other. <laughs> Not on schedule. No, it's weird with these league opponents. You just never know. It seems almost random which schools do and don't play each other outside of the size difference. Well, the two Saline County schools, Sacred Heart and Southeast, they don't play each other. Well, but you're also, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a 1A school and a 2A borderline 3A school. Well, and that's right, Sacred Heart's 1A this year. I was going to say they last week, Wichita Trinity, I believe, is a 3A school, and they've yes, got sir. some 1As and 2As, so they're playing... Either their classification or actually going up one for some of the opponents. Second down for Minneapolis. 
Handoff, and this is going to be. We'll see where they forward progress will mark it. Bring up third down. But this is what we talked about before with just the resilience of the Sacred Heart team. Yes, they know they're down 27 nothing with four minutes left to play, but they are not content to see another score go up on that board. They are still fighting to the nail here to the very end, and you got to love to see that, especially from a squad with so many youngsters out there at, because of the injuries that we talked about. And got to bring it up one more time, playing for pride against the Lions. Got to bring up Pride once more. In the backfield, looking downfield, now going to run. Flag in the backfield, called into the end zone. is going to be just for Minneapolis, pending the flag. Well, and that's the thing. Sometimes when a hole that big opens, you wonder if there's a hole. And it was thrown back in the backfield, so let's take a second and see here. There's a white hat. And it is. Ball start. Yeah, no, an offensive hole. Or, I'm sorry. You're good. Offensive hold, and, and like I said, sometimes you see that big hole open up and you go, hmm, that's, a, that's an awfully big hole. <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how that got there. And then you look around, got to be a flag somewhere, and there and was. There was, yep. It's going to back up Minneapolis third and long. It's going to back them all the way up to the 28. Clock wound again, three and a half to play. As right now, Minneapolis driving. The Knights might not get the ball back, but again, I mentioned playing for pride, but trying to keep Minneapolis out of the end zone right now. Just rolling to his right, looking, looking, fires it over the middle in double coverage. And it's gonna be knocked away. Well, and there you go. That brings up fourth down and boy, Salina to go for Minneapolis here. And you wonder if they might just punt this away or if they're gonna to try to go for it. But a big goal line, or not goal line, but a big defensive stand here for Sacred Heart. And maybe that's the positive that they take with them into practice this there week. We go. And like you said, still fighting and just obviously not going to make up four scores in three plus minutes, but anything positive to build a little, little momentum going into that big one with Ellsworth back in Salina next week. Got our first final of the day. Ellsworth beats Republic County 62 to 6. A rough couple of weeks. 59 nothing Minneapolis beat them and now 62 nothing. 121 to nothing, if I'm math right, over two games. Oh, I'm not a math guy. I'm not going to try to check you on that. I'll, I'll assume you're correct, sir. I think I'm right. Nice, we'll get it back. 312 to play. Let's see if uh, Nice can put together a drive and wipe that goose egg off the scoreboard. Let's come up to the line. Matucci a quarterback again. Drops back, looking downfield. That'll be a short pass, and it'll be a short gain just across the 30. That just hits Bogart for a little slip screen there. And once again, I mean, it picks up three yards. They've been good on first down. They've been good about getting themselves into second and six, second and five. It's just been finding ways to complete and finish the drives that have been the sticking point, as I believe we've got a timeout. And yep, the Knights will stop the clock here with 2.58 left to go. And we'll go ahead and take one more break here as I want to say thanks again to Bennington State Bank for being our presenting sponsor of Sacred Heart Football tonight. We mentioned... Just some fun stuff here. Gave away a little money. We had a tent here with several of the staff members, but also they paid for all the tickets. They covered the tabs. So we got a bunch of night fans here. Some of them have left across the way, but a big Minneapolis crowd here, and it was all free as Pennington State Bank paid for every ticket here this evening. So I want to thank them for sponsoring Sacred Heart Football. 
here on Salina Post as you're listening and watching to Night Football this evening. Coming up during the post game, we'll name a gem of the game brought to you by Vernon Jewelers, also a hit of the game. You like this one, we mentioned it earlier. Hit of the game brought to you and presented by the Salina Pain Clinic. And a smart play of the game from Clark Insurance with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. Minneapolis back out on the field out of the timeout. Speaking of speaking of pain, got another score to pass along to you. This can't be good. Chapman falls to Clay Center, 61 to nothing. A couple of NCKL foes. And another lopsided score here for a couple of area teams. Matucci back in her center one more time. Motion in the backfield, and Matucci's pressure, diving in a sack. And that's scooped up, and that's going to be a scoop and score here for Minneapolis. Jeez. Boy, ball on the deck out of absolutely nowhere. And Minneapolis will turn it in for six. And they, catch, they cap it off, I should say, defensive touchdown for the Lions. That was a great pursuit on the sack and forcing the fumble and the turnover. 33-0 Lions, just over two and a half to play in the game. And that was Ryan Meyer, the junior, with the scoop and score. Kick is up. PAT is good. 2.47 to play, fourth quarter. It's now Minneapolis continuing to pitch a shutout. Minneapolis 34, Sager Hart nothing, and you're listening to Sager Hart Football on Salina Post, presented by Bennington State Bank. Hometown Disposal is a locally owned and operated waste hauling company offering residential and commercial trash service. Hometown Disposal offers front load, roll off, and rear load disposal bins for all your waste hauling needs. Let Hometown Disposal assist you with all your daily, weekend, or seasonal cleanup jobs. Hometown Disposal offers waste disposal options that are simple, affordable, and stress-free. Hometown Disposal is the right choice for families, local business owners, and general contractors. Contact Hometown Disposal, Salinas premier waste hauling solution looking to take the next step in your career consider an mba from kansas wesleyan you can complete the program fully online in as little as one year and your last class is free want to be a part of one of the region's fastest growing universities visit kwu.edu slash mba today that's kwu.edu slash mba And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. Back in Minneapolis, uh, defensive score now for the Lions as they open up a 34-0 lead. Two minutes and change here to go in this one. Adam Coulter, Tyler Henry, and Avery Cagle on the broadcast. Thanks for joining us, listening to us, watching us here this evening. Here in the waning moments of the fourth quarter, End over end kick, far side taken, far side 30, 35, and trying to evade a couple of tacklers on the return and be a short game for Sacred Heart. Yeah, another good return there for Matsuchi, who gave it everything he had, and another opportunity for the Sacred Heart offense, although that's a, a heavy blow to be dealt on the sack fumble and scoop and score picked up by Minneapolis. We'll see how much Sacred Heart's got left in the tank here. And just anything positive at this point, again, if they were a little, they're still playing hard, but a little frustrated maybe with that last score, but see what they can put together in this last two and a half plus minutes. Matucci back in there at quarterback. Snap to him, looking to his left. Now rolls to his right, far side. Flag call, or flat, late flag thrown. Yep, trying to hook up there with Bryson Gotti, and we do have a couple of, a little bit of laundry back in the backfield. We'll have to check that. Right between the 25 and 30 yard line. Oh, 
Dave. Holding call against Sacred Heart. It'll back him up. Inside the 25 and all the way back to about the 22. First and 20 for the Knights. Single receiver to either side for the Knights. Rolling back again to his right, looking, looking. Matucci looking right now, runs left near side and runs into about four blue jerseys. Up beyond the 25. Well, with the penalty, not a bad game, but it still sets up second down at about 16 to go here. So still a, still a tough spot to be in. Second and plenty, under two to play now. Minute 48 and counting, 34 nothing Minneapolis. And want to invite you as well, our recap story. So we mentioned Southeast of Saline at home tonight. Sacred Heart here on the road, making the short trip up to Minneapolis. And we'll have recap stories on salinapost.com. We hope you'll stop by there and check those out. Knights back up to the line. Rolling right now, Matucci wanted to run and oh. nearly brought down and then got a couple of more, but it's still going to be third and long for Sacred Heart. And we're at the one minute mark here, the fourth. Several lines in the backfield led by Ryan Myers. Third and long for Sacred Heart, 45 seconds and counting, and neither team in a particular big hurry to, particularly big hurry to run a play here. Yeah, and really quickly, while we've got a break in the action, Abilene gets the 47-12 win over Concordia. Good for the night, or <sighs> the Cowboys. It's been a long night. <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> but I think I, my immediate thought there's Gotti again, and, and I'll tell you what, that's darn near enough for a first down. He hauled it in. It's going to be fourth and short, maybe fourth and a yard. I was going to mention, you met, you brought up the Abilene score beating Concordia, another NCKL game tonight. I think back to Abilene going 0-9 and, and making strides since, I know, uh, was that a year or two ago, they went 0-9. Which shown signs of improvement since then, getting a big win against Concordia this evening. Oh, and really quickly, do have one more league score to pass along to you as game between Southeast of Salina and Beloit's gone final. Trojans in purple get the win, 52 to six. Man. Big win for Sacred Heart. Southeast of Salina. <laughs> Long night, you say. Of course, we will have plenty of scores coming up for you on the scoreboard show with Sam Pretty. You can tune into KINA to catch that. And if you want the latest up-to-date scores, be sure to go give us a follow at S Post Sports on Twitter, or as the kids are calling it nowadays, X. That drives me <laughs> nuts. <laughs> well, then I see the X and forget that, oh, yeah, they changed the name. <laughs> or I see, refer I see Twitter, or I see X, formerly known as Twitter, so... There's still stories I read. They're still keeping the disclaimer so people know what the heck you're talking about. Pass down to right side. That's going to be good for a first down for the Knights. Pass is complete out to the far side. Near midfield. Out of bounds. The far sideline. Time out taken by Sacred Heart. And Coach Jennings for the Knights. Going to get... Go ahead and burn his timeouts here. That was our last one. That is the final timeout. And the Minneapolis, you can hear him in the background here. We're on the Minneapolis side of the stadium. Some of the Knights players, or some of the uh, Lions players, I should say, getting the home crowd into it. Here in the waning moments of the game. 
Is this one just about official? Quick run near side. Clocks at zeros, and that's going to do it. Well, the Knights hung tough, but one score at a time. Minneapolis kept extending that lead, and the big blow to ice it, but wasn't already the fumble recovery, the scoop and score, as you mentioned. Final score, Minneapolis 34, Sacred Heart nothing. With a quick break in, we will come back for post-game, and again, we'll name a, game, a gem of the game, brought to you by Vernon Jewelers, a hit of the game, presented by Salina Pain Clinic, Smart Play of the Game, brought to you by Smart Insurance, with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. And the area scoreboard we've been mentioning as well, the, some of the final scores coming in, our area scoreboard brought to you by Salina Surgical Hospital. If you're listening to and watching Sacred Heart Football on Salina Post, presented by Bennington State Bank. APAC Kansas Incorporated has been building the heartland from the ground up for over a century. From the supply of aggregate materials, hot mix asphalt, and concrete to the construction of roads and bridges, we do it all. You've seen our trucks, and now we want to hire you. APAC in Salina is growing, and we are hiring for all positions. From truck drivers to mechanics, general laborers, and construction, APAC has your next career. For more details, visit the job links page at salinapost.com. Great pay and benefits, APAC is an equal opportunity employer. The Bennington State Bank proudly supports local sports and wants each student to know that their hard work and talent is noticed and appreciated. At Bennington State Bank, they care about local communities and are committed to fostering long-term relationships through the delivery of excellent customer service, integrity, and fairness. From helping local businesses to supporting community youth and nonprofits to helping you purchase your dream home or invest in your future, Bennington State Bank is here to help. Give them a call to experience exceptional banking with hometown service. Bennington State Bank, your trusted hometown bank. Member FDIC. Summer travel can damage and destroy your tires. Commercial Tire Centers encourages you to check for proper inflation. Underinflation or overinflation along with the extreme Kansas heat can cause a blowout, damage to your vehicle, and even cause accidents. Make sure your passenger car, truck, RV, and trailer tires are all ready to hit the road when you visit Commercial Tire. We'll even check your spare tire. Commercial Tire Centers, West Crawford and North 9th in Salina. Commercial Tire Centers. Where service is everything. Mowry Clinic is pleased to welcome obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Mariah Jones. Dr. Jones is a Salina area native and is excited to return to her roots and care for the women of North Central Kansas. She completed medical school and residency at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. Dr. Jones is joining Drs. Knox, Prendergast, Morgan, Ablard, and Roche at Mowry Women's Clinic in Salina. Schedule your appointment with Dr. Jones by calling 785-827-7261 or visit MoweryClinic.com to learn why you matter more at Maori. Hometown Disposal is a locally owned and operated waste hauling company offering residential and commercial trash service. Hometown Disposal offers front load, roll off, and rear load disposal bins for all your waste hauling needs. Let Hometown Disposal assist you with all your daily, weekend, or seasonal cleanup jobs. Hometown Disposal offers waste disposal options that are simple, affordable, and stress-free. Hometown Disposal is the right choice for families, local business owners, and general contractors. Contact Hometown Disposal, Salinas Premier Mere Waste Hauling Solution. Looking to take the next step in your career? Consider an MBA from Kansas Wesleyan. You can complete the program fully online in as little as one year, and your last class is free. Want to be a part of one of the region's fastest growing universities? Visit kwu.edu slash MBA today. That's kwu.edu slash MBA. And now back to your Sacred Heart Knights football. And back here in Minneapolis one final time here as we begin our post game. And we need to name a gem of the game from Vernon Jewelers, head of the game from Salina Pain Clinic, and smart play of the game from Smart Insurance with locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. I want to thank John Krajacek, the principal of Sacred Heart, for joining us back in halftime, and our sponsor, Kansas Wesleyan University. Area scoreboard brought to you by Salina Surgical Hospital. And Tyler, a couple more scores uh, we've come across. Yeah, 
Oop. Yeah, I got a few for you here. Mentioned earlier, Ellsworth beats Republic County 62 to 6. Well, Bunzi knocks off Northern Heights 56 to nothing. Clay Center with a 61-0 victory over Chapman. Abilene gets it 47 to 12 over Concordia. Southeast of Saline wins 52 to 6 over Beloit. And Wamigo pulls off the comeback, or not comeback, but the bounce back to get a 49 to nothing win over Marysville. All right, Tyler, thank you very much. Tyler Henry and Avery Cadle on the broadcast. Along with myself, Adam Coulter, thank you very much for joining us here this evening. And well, I need your I need your help here, Tyler. Uh, we've got these the gem of the game, the hit of the game, and the smart play of the game. And is there anything that stuck out to you? I'll just ask for the about the hit of the game. Well, I think we can get the hit of the game in a little bit, but I think Michael Matucci probably has to be the our gem. gem of the game. I mean, taking a look from the Sacred Heart perspective, obviously down in numbers, and both when they put him in there to try to make something happen late as quarterback, but also earlier in the game, just the number of ways they found to utilize him as a returner, as a receiver, as a rusher, he really stood out to me throughout the course of this game, and I think once they get this offense firing on all cylinders, he is going to be the centerpiece that they build it around. So for that reason, from the Sacred Heart side, Michael Matucci is my gem of the game. Gem of the game, I will agree with that. Vernon Jewelers, our sponsor of the gem of the game, and I wanted to add, too, just the, the if the Knights had scored, had a chance to attempt a PAT in addition to being a slot receiver, also uh, playing defensively, going to quarterback in the second half, and possibly uh, where he would have been a kicker. Just so many positions. He played uh, three and would have played possibly four positions tonight. So, again, Michael Matucci in agreement on that. Our gem of the game brought to you by Vernon Jewelers. Our smart play of the game from Smart Insurance, location that's in line of Abilene and Harrington. <laughs> I mean, a couple on there. I think there were there was there was one play that certainly stands out to me, and that was Michael Matucci as he drifted his way over to the sideline, looking downfield, saw that he had Evan Bogart, and he knew that Bogart was covered up. So he makes the motion for Bogart to get downfield, gives himself the space, and then gets to the edge. I know in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't result in any points, but as far as a heads-up play by a savvy veteran. I love what I saw to Michael Matucci on that play, and I know we keep saying his name, but really he was the standout to me, and that is the one that sticks out in my mind. And again, like I said, it's when he's you're playing both sides of the ball and playing you know, three positions tonight, could have been four, that it's hard not to mention his name quite a bit. But again, that is our smart play of the game from Smart Insurance, locations in Salina, Abilene, and Harrington. And mentioned as well, the hit of the game presented by the Salina Pain Clinic. And there was... There were some good hits tonight on both sides for both teams, but there was, and I wish I could remember exactly uh, the players involved, but I know there was one kind of to our left here, right on the near sideline, but it was a rush, and I feel bad. I'm looking over at you like, okay, what you thinking? I mean, nothing. I feel like, you know, again, a lot, of, a lot of runs up the middle, a lot of runs to the edge, but as far as hard hits go, I don't feel like there was anything too dramatic individually no. in this game. It seemed like it was just a, a good, clean, hard-nosed game of football on both sides, and certainly a couple of good plays as far as sacks are concerned. I think if I have to give it to one player on either side, it's got to be the, the hit that jarred the ball loose and set Ryan Meyer right. up for the scoop and score for Minneapolis late in the game, and I hate to do that, but at the end of the day, that's probably the most consequential hit, and that's probably, for my money, the hit of the game tonight. There you go, hit of the game presented by the Salina Pain Clinic. Uh, one more time, do you want to thank Avery Cadell on the camera this evening, also alongside Tyler Henry. Don't forget to join him on KINA tomorrow for... Coyote football as they travel to the Mound Builders of Southwestern University. Thank you to our sponsors, Sage Products, also Smart Insurance, Salina Pain Clinic, Vernon Jewelers, Salina Surgical Hospital, also Kansas Wesleyan University, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Salina Septic Service, Commercial Tire Center, Hometown Disposal, Salina Ortho, Apex Shears, Mowry Clinic, and tonight, Bennington State Bank as well, our big presenting sponsor, Again, thank you to them for everything this evening and all the tickets and getting a great crowd here for a rivalry game, a league game, and short road trip. And brought a lot of folks here to the stadium here in Minneapolis. And I want to remind you as well, coming up, tune in tonight to KINA, 10 o'clock, for the Kansas High School Football Scoreboard Show, as you can hear scores and game wraps from across the state of Kansas, brought to you by Home Automotive Center's 
and Salina Surgical Hospital. So one more time for Avery Cale, for Tyler Henry. I'm Adam Coulter. Next game next week, the Ellsworth Bearcats in town in Salina as the Knights will get their first home game of the season for week three. We'll take the air at about 6.40, 7 o'clock kickoff for that one from the Graves Family Sports Complex on the campus of Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina. Again, for Avery, for Tyler, I'm Adam. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. Final score one more time, Minneapolis 34, Sacred Heart nothing as the Knights go to 0-2. Minneapolis improves to 2-0 on this season. We'll talk to you next week. This has been your Sacred Heart Knights football, presented by Eagle Communications.